Welcome to Dungeon World Filler Arc, which is our new thing, um, so you're welcome. Uh, I'm Ryan, the GM. It's the 22nd of December 2019. Here are the players. Hello, I'm Callum. Hi, I'm Adrian. Hi, I'm Sophie. I know, a very strange but very succinct introduction. Uh, we'll have more people eventually, but this is our side game. Um, these are players from Keepers of the Golden Gate, so here's my shameless plug. If you haven't watched all of that yet, like, subscribe and go watch all Do of it. it! It's good fun. Good wholesome fun. There are no throwing children into abyssal holes. Nope. Not at all. Um, which no naked though. Nope. <laughs> no nudity at all. Um, <laughs> Good wholesome things um, that you will find all the videos are rated not suitable for children though, so bear that in mind. Bear that in mind, terrible. Anyway, we're here to play Dungeon World and here we are. Now to get started, we'll start, uh, we'll go through each character and learn a little bit about them. Um, does MD specifically want to go first? Or will I just pick randomly? I don't mind. Cool. Um, we'll take Sophie first. So. Do you want to give us your character's name? Uh, Kitty Lewick. <laughs> Kitty Lewick. Perfect. Yep. Not predictable at all. But I love it. Right, and what is your class? I have gone for Ranger. Okay. Mainly because we could get a pet. Of course. Yeah, pets are good. Now the name isn't a total giveaway of what my pet might be. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, we can talk about that, right? A wick! So, <laughs> literally, it's just that she talks to a candle. Yep, it's fine. Yep. Um, now, right, so you are called Kitty. Hello, Wick. I'm just taking my own notes here. Uh, what race are you? Uh, elf. Okay. Cool. So you're an elf ranger, and what is your pet? It's a wolf. Okay. Called dog. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Not going to get confusing at all. Excellent. Yeah, sounds like you're very confused when you named it, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, it barks, so. No, is they it? Don't really. They more growl and howl. Yes. Well, this is it then. Like this is how we start establishing this this kind of stuff. So, is it normal for is like is that a normal pet for an elf, for example? Like a wolf, or is that unusual? I'd probably say it's unusual. Okay. Because elves would probably go for more, like horses and things. Like use. Oh well, wolves are useful, very useful. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. So for you, that's a specifically kind of more unique thing, though. Like mm. you're one of the kind of outsiders that way, specifically when yeah. it comes to your your choice of pet. Um, but. All my family were like attuned with a. They're like, wolf. Right. Okay. So does that mean <laughs> do all elves bond with animal then? Maybe my family does. Right. Okay. Um. So is this the Lewick family, or is that yeah. just your title? No. I. Or is that like a clan name for elves, the Lewick elves, or? Yeah. We'll we'll go for clans. Okay, cool. So that's a clan name. That's Lowick Elves, and the bond with animals. Okay, okay. Um, is there a specific area of the world that's in there? Is quite common in place, for example. Like, c would other people have like intermingled with your people, or are you quite secluded? It would probably be quite a sought after clan, like. Okay. Because th they can bond with things, it makes life a bit easier. So, like, I'd imagine some would have eagles or hawks, that kind of thing, to help mm -hmm. with navigation and hunting. They'd be an asset to have. Yep, cool. So, in high demand, you to scale with animals. Cool. Yep, perfect. And um, so, you just you just have no issue mingling with like other races then. No. I'm happy to. Though my charisma is shocking. Yeah, that's okay. As long as it's not also wheezing, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> right, okay, uh, do you want to describe your look of your character then? So, animal eyes, I'd say, is like a family trait. Like, you can distinguish us from just our eyes, really. 
Um, yeah, so if you've seen so two elves in a room, you would look at one of them and go, ah, you're one of the Lewick elves. Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, my character um, has a leaf body, um, a hooded head, so like, I try not to reveal my face because like, the eyes are a dead giveaway and mm -hmm. I try not to because, you know, people then ask you for things and yeah, um, I tend to camouflage as well, so okay. it'll be all like... Yeah, camouflage. -y. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> what was the traits of your pet again? Um, like savage and what? Oh, the, so it's got quick reflexes. It's intimidating and stealthy, and the weaknesses would be savage and frightening. Right. Okay. Definitely able to hide that. Yep. Sure. Definitely. Um, <laughs> with your stealthy wolf, um, called dog. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, right, why did you end up with dog then? Right, <laughs> if well, it's unusual to have a a pet wolf, I will say the clan. When you reach a certain age, you go off and do like a sort of a soul searching kind of thing, but like it's a more kind of pilgrimage like. Thing? Yeah, you sort of you go off, and hopefully at, at some point along the way you will. Oh, like a spirit quest your... type idea, yeah. right? Yeah, something your... similar to that. Pilgrimage to find animal pal, I take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's um, all elves do this. Well, in my clan, they yeah. do. All elves of this clan do this. Okay. Okay. And. So you got a wolf during that, and okay, yeah. Would you say you chose the wolf, or it chose you, or you chose each other? Would that it's be? It's kind of like a mutual thing. Mm -hmm. So does that mean you feel a bit like an outcast from your clan? Is that why bit. the wolf chose you, like you just chose each other? Do you think? Now that's getting deep. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure. I'm sort of trying to think of how my character actually stumbled upon the. Yeah. Maybe I I helped rescue it from a situation when yeah. it was itself a young pup, as it were. Yeah, maybe because that and could then, be like you could have been on your pilgrimage and you thought you would, like you would stop it to go help this like wolf pup or whatever, yeah. and then perhaps yeah, like maybe you didn't realize that was the pilgrimage, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I just continued on for like another month with this dog following me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, no, that works, I think. Yeah, I um, I like that. And then at that point you thought, oh wait, I I've done it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, <laughs> this is a thing. Okay, it commands, it, it obeys me. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Mother's not good. going to like this. <laughs> okay, and obviously we can come back to obviously whether or not that means you feel like an outcast of the clan. But there's a better question then. Do you get shit for having a wolf in your clan do they think it's it is a very unusual animal to come back with but there's um, a difference between being the only person in your family with like neon pink hair or every one of your family bullies you for having neon pink hair right yeah do you know what i mean like they're two different things so having an unusual pet is fine but does the clan dislike this or are they totally they're, fine with it they're wary about it they're not shunning me but you can tell people whisper behind my back. Okay, cool. Yeah. Interesting. Um, high behind your back, is it? I take it you're fully aware of it, but does, does it bug you or? I've got used to it. Mm -hmm. Like it did at first, but I was brought up to be polite. So yeah. don't really confront people about it. Okay. Yeah. But I've in turn learned to just walk off a duck's back kind of thing. Just. Mm -hmm. That's their issue, not mine. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, are you revealing your alignment, or are you keeping that to yourself? Well, I think my alignment is clear from when I helped a pup. It's neutral. Okay, yeah. They're neutral. Um, that's help an animal or spirit of the wild. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Right, so... I. Yeah, I think we'll talk about bonds as well then. Right, so we'll do bonds just now. So what have you got for your bonds? Right, so you've got... Just to skip a wee bit ahead, we've got... In fact, no, hold on, we'll come back. We'll do bonds last for everybody, right? 
Yeah. I think we don't ask. Is there any... I'm just saying names and it's like, Yeah, what? and I'd rather introduce, that's what I thought as well. Anything else you'd like to add about your character at the moment? Um, no, I think okay. I'm okay. Yep, good, good. Yep. Who would like to go next? <laughs> I could do it. There we go, perfect. Right, Joe. So, what is your character's name? It's Sibylla Treebark. Perfect. And what class are you? A wizard. Excellent. I'll add this in. So, Sibylla Treebark. And you're a wizard. And if I can ask as well, then, do uh, you want to describe the look of your character? Yeah, so she looks a little bit deranged. <laughs> Um, crazy eyes, wild hair, weirdly like multicolored robes, mm -hmm. uh, on a almost too thin body. Like you actually wonder if she eats. Mm. Um, so that's probably gonna be a thing that I I use or that I, there's a purpose why I chose that. And um, but but she's always like smiling about something and looking around and smiling and looking around and smiling. So you don't really think she's all there. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, what race is Sibylla? Human. Excellent. And let's see. Is it normal for humans to have magic? I have no clue. Uh, but you tell me. Like, are you rare or? Are there other humans uh, that cast magic? Like you tell me, this is this is you deciding. Um, I'm I'm gonna say that it's uncommon. Okay, right. Um, Specifically for humans to cast magic. Ma maybe magic's usually like something in the domain of elves. I'm not sure, um, but that that probably like the fact that she has magic might actually be a reason why she's a bit. Right. Okay. Let's so uh, uncommon to have magic as a human, right? And normally, elves are the magic ones, and this has meant. So, let me try and rephrase that. This is why she. I assume, sorry, what was the pronouns for? Sibylla? She, she, she. This is why she seems distracted constantly. Is that the best way to put it? Yeah, that would also be a way. Distracted right. a lot. I'm trying to do a very PC way of writing that there. Um, sure, sure. Seems distracted. Lots. Right, yo, I'm going to add that part where, because I'm taking world notes as well. Um, so, humans, uncommon to have magic, normally elves are the magic ones. Okay. Right, so, um, if that's the case, if it's uncommon for humans to have magic, why? Like, why have you studied magic? Like, where did you learn it from? Or what caused you to, like, become magic? Like, if it's mostly um, elves that have it, like, did you have an elven teacher? Yeah, yeah. And um, I was also thinking that it could probably be, like, that, that she had, like, I don't know, some misfortune in life and this elf decided to like take her under their wing and be like I'll show you a way so you don't have to worry about that again mm -hmm. what um, was the misfortune so then? was it like um, something that happened when you were young or when you were older or see that's what I'm trying to think <laughs> what it would be like so Maybe then, like that that both her parents somehow died because of something that could have been cured with magic. Both parents um, died to something magic could fix. Something magic could fix. There we go, I'll put it down. I don't know how I do, but I always end up with the very dark <laughs> That's stories, okay. backstories. That's okay. Um, right, so why didn't they get the help they needed? Could you, could you not afford it? Was there nobody available? Any... Did elves not like Yeah, I think maybe people? there just weren't elves near us that we could 
go to that right quickly. okay i don't know so that's that's that's, that's fine kind of so what, maybe if we were living quite isolated no elves uh, nearby to fix parents dusty died okay i am um, if that's the case then where are you from right so isolated right so yeah, yeah like quite isolated but in like a human sort of uh, uh, village uh, town city yeah yeah i'd say like an isolated sort of village and yeah. then when uh all human um, or is it mixed in some way yeah yeah like that that would be all human and then after this happened I, maybe maybe the elf got too late and just late enough to say, oh, yeah, okay, I got okay. time, I could have fixed this. And Is that why they teach you then? Yeah. Them and I end up following them. To, and like relentlessly saying, you know, teach me. So let's say Elven Healer. I'll put that in. Elven Healer was too late. Uh, then took Sabilla under their wing. Right, so I'm assuming the healer was something tree bark then. Is that where you got yeah, your name maybe, from? Yeah, maybe maybe I could take their name. Yeah, um, I didn't think of that very well. Um, I think it's because I was kind of alternating between: do I go elf? Do I go human? Mm -hmm. Do I go elf? Do I go human? Yeah, and kind of a very both, smartly, yeah. <laughs> I kind of chose the name before choosing what the character was going to be. That's okay. It works. I mean, we don't know how naming conventions in this one work. Um, we're building this world. Okay, so we've got. You're from an isolated village. What's the name of the village? I'll just come up with something random for you. Let's see. Town name generator. What have we got? Uh, let's see. Write me some towns. God, these are all terrible. I'll dump these in chat and see if you like any of them. Whatever, honestly. Um, not the one that looks Welsh, oh god, no. No. Um. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm Mowland Creek. Yeah, Maybe. let's go for that. That's a good one. Right? That one's not too horrible. <laughs> right, so you're from there. Also sounds kind of remote, doesn't it? So. Yeah, that's what I thought. Milan Creek. Perfect. There we go. Uh, right, do you... A... Let's figure out this next part then. So, you're a human with magic, which is rare. You were taught magic by an elf um, called Tree Bark. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Is tree bark still alive? No, I think what I'm gonna say is that now that he's gone, I'm, I've like gone into the world world to like find my own purpose. Okay, so he's dead. And learn more and maybe find other elves that I could like learn for, because maybe the ones that were around him didn't quite accept me as another person to teach and stuff. Okay, yeah. I don't. Perfect. Um, looking for more elves to learn from. Perfect. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'll write that down as like your overall goal then. That's probably a good thing to have as an overall goal. Now, I'm going to jump back to Sophie temporarily. Do you have any, like, what is, um, like, your ultimate desire for this character to complete? Do you know what I mean? Would it be like, I don't become one with the spirit of the forest type vibe, you know, like or learning, looking for more elves to learn from, which Adris was. Um, um. Like, have we think about that if you want, and I'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, since I'm just gonna hit you with that, and during this process, it was kind of nice that Adri provided us with one of those questions, which is good. Um, right. Uh, do you want to tell us your alignment? You don't have to, but you can reveal if you wish. I'm gonna go for. Shit, what did I go for? I think I went for good. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so yes, I did. Yep. And use your magic to I want to aid them. people. I want to help people. Yeah. And, oh, Just I'm like tree bark, it's how you were taught, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is in kind of a nice way of coming out of like a relatively secluded village, right? It's like, yeah, we don't really 
mingle with other races, but also you just left there, went cool, no ties anymore, off I go, learn everything I can. Perfect. Um, cool. And I went to ask this, so Sophie, where are you from? Is what I should have asked you as well. Um. So are you from like a village, a city, a town? I guess it would be part of a city. Okay. Like that it'd be like a hidden city sort of thing. Like the elves don't tend to advertise their locations, do they? Um I mean it'd be like... so they don't. I I will I'll write that down. All right. So okay. elves <laughs> oh, oh, let me make sure this is gonna let me tell Probably you. Probably elves... define more, so yay. Elves are generally elitists, aren't they? They don't they look down on other races generally. Um, oh, slow down. Let me just get my notes up to date. <laughs> right. Holy crap. Right. There's a lot to work with here. Right. Sorry. Let me speed it out. Let's see. Let me add this in. Right. So, uh, elves generally hide their cities. Right. Okay. I like that. Um, and they think they are better than other races. Yeah. Or just humans, do you see? Just, I'd say most other races that they've come across. Then most. They're like humans, dwarves. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, is that the Wick clan as well? The Lewick clan? No. Um, the Lewick clan is more open. Um, are, you like the, if, are you the only open one, really? Or is there like a bunch of... There are other clans that are open to other races. Like It's a very old view, but, you know... Elves like their traditions. Okay, so um, did the Lowick clan live in a city then? Uh, so it's a hidden city, I think you said, yeah? Yeah. Kay. They did live in the hidden city, but they would like go out not necessarily hunting, but I don't know. I'm, I was trying to think of things on the spot and my brain's just it's, going. It's tough, oh, isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> it is a bit. <laughs> well, that's kind of the point of this exercise. It's meant to just be kind of fast and crazy. Um, cool. I'm going to just dump in... Uh, some random elven names, right? So, any of them for your city name, or do you want to have it as something else? Oh Jesus, was that in? Is that for me? It's in Discord, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, because you've got a hidden elven city. I want to know where. Uh, is there where the little wick clan? So, you just live in part of this city, you said, right? Yeah. So the, it's sort of like separated into. Okay. Clans, yeah, okay, with a general hub in the middle of like shops and stuff. Um, I think Sifa Alora, sort of maybe Nell Halone. Is it, maybe you can mix them up if you wanted to. Uh, like Sifa Alora is nice, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's it does sound quite like a hidden oasis kind of thing. Yeah, let's go for that. Um, we'll take Sifa Alora. Um, uh, let's see, location. City, so paste that in. Oh, the formatting is gonna do my head in, but that's fine. <laughs> in my document, cool. And what about goal? Now, um, th this isn't what you're trying to achieve today, by the way. This is just in general. What what is the character yeah. ultimately looking to get out of life? Really, big question. I know. I'd say just a, a better connection with nature. That's maybe. perfect. Yeah. Um, Looking for a better, not a better, a better, better connection. <laughs> no, definitely not bitter. Thanks. Sure. Perfect. Uh, right. So, back to our wonderful wizard, Sibylla. Uh, we've done your alignment, we've done your look, um, we've done your race. It's just bonds that are left to do. You can, do you want to tell us your spells or keep a hold of them until you use them? For you, Adri. If you're still with us. Um. Yeah, I you don't mind. It's up to you. You can tell us them now, or if you want to hide them and like reveal them as you use them. I don't mind either way. Um. Yeah, I'll reveal them now. Why not? So I have invisibility. I have the um, unseen servant. Magic missile and. Tel um, cure light wounds, and I also have Presagitation, Light, and 
I can't remember if it was unseen the servant. Yeah, not said. You've said telepathy. I thought I said that one. I beat it. There we go. Perfect. Well, I, I'm some way there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good, good. Right. So I think that's a uh, Sibylla. Right. I believe we're on to. In fact, is there anything else you want to tell us about our character before we move on? Nope. nope. Good, good. Callum. <laughs> Who is your character? What is their name? Cavill Darkblade. Do you want to say that again for me? Cavill Darkblade. Cavill Darkblade. And that isn't for any reason other than I'm trying to get pronunciation proper. Cavill Darkblade. <laughs> Are they a noble edge lord? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> They're not, not a noble, no. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, right, yeah, so. Describe Cavill. What, what what class are you playing? He's a fighter. Yep, sounds right, yep. Probably edged weapons, but... Um, right. Can you describe them? What's their look? Well... Cavill's eyes have no light. They're sort of dull looking. Mm -hmm. uh, if you looked long enough into his eyes, you would say they are dead eyes. Okay. Um, Takes a while to figure that out, does it? Oh, yeah. It, well, you know, at first you might think they're quite dull, but then uh, they're fairly dead. Like you're like, oh god, this, don't look at his eyes; they're quite quite terrifying. He wears a battered helmet. Um, he doesn't remove this uh, this helmet either. Uh, the ha helmet signifies like how often he's been in battle, and uh, it just. It's there to show that he's a hardened warrior. Okay, yeah. Um, through breaks in his armor or like where it doesn't cover his arms and stuff, you can see scarred skin. Like, again, enforcing the idea he's been in many battles, this mm. third guy. Um, you wouldn't be too sure if they're all victory scars, though, because they look, some look deeper than just a few scratch. A few scratches, so you can see she probably won his fair few. She probably lost, but somehow it survived. Okay. And he seems to have quite a ravaged body due to all of this fighting he's been part of. Okay, okay. Interesting. And what race is Cavill? He's human. Okay. Right, you. And. Is it normal for humans to be so proficient in combat? You, uh, humans have the ability to be proficient with long hours of training. There are a few prodigies mm -hmm. uh, that humans have created within their race. Okay. Um, one might say Cavill is a prodigy uh, when watching him fight. There's also... Does he start fires? He, I mean, he can spit fire. Not a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> um, no, he's... Um, he's, he's um, if one person would fight against him, they, they would feel quite outmatched unless they are themselves a, a skilled fighter. Okay, so are you well known for your fighting skill? Not anymore. Okay, that's a lot to work with, right? Was well known for fighting skill, but not any more. Why not anymore? He has changed his name. Changed his name. Right, okay. So, who did you used to be? <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did this. <laughs> used to be... <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> Just go for it. Say it. Say it. <laughs> We're here together. He used to be Marcus. Not Aurelius, don't worry. Marcus. He used to be <laughs> Decimus Primus Maximus Secundus. The Serpent Spear. Okay, Marcus. Serpent Spear. Okay. Right. Are the Serpent Spear family very well known? No. Okay. Uh, the Serpent Spear uh, family is a peasant family. They're just a bunch of fans. 
Peasant family. But Marcus Servant Spear is well known. Why is he well known? Because he joined a mercenary company at a young age when a mer when a mercenary company came through his village. And right. They saw him training in the back and thought and thought he showed promise. Join they me. took him with him. Right. Okay, what's their name? <laughs> I need a <laughs> I need a generator. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if I can get you one. Uh, Christ. Let's see. Mercenary names. Do I have one for that? Mermaid names. Mecha names. Oh, guild, guild name generator. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they used to be called the Steel Well Mercenaries. The Steel Well. Okay. As in steel like a sword and well like a pit stealing, right? yeah like yeah like steel a, as in yeah. a sword or steel as in theft Sto uh, sword. 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 <laughs> a sword it's so steely <laughs> um, okay cool steel well um, merc company merc company radio and what is their reputation if you could sum up their reputation in two separate words what would it be Hmm. <laughs> um. Chivalrous. Okay. And. Aggressive. Right, okay. Interesting choices, but good. Uh, chivalrous and aggressive. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Marcos is from a uh, peasant family. Cool. So, why did you become well known in that Merc company? What did you do that made you well known? Um, the mercenary company quickly found out he was like a prodigy of uh, of blade and spear so sword and spear and uh, like he could switch between his short sword and his spear and take on many enemies at once and still and still come out on top winning he wouldn't be he wouldn't come out unscathed he was not that godlike but uh, he would win most of his fights okay did that mean you got like a a job maybe earlier than you should have, for example, like if they're chivalrous as a merc company, were they maybe hired to protect someone or retrieve something or attack someone, for example? Um, it's unlikely they would, I mean, they're aggressive, so maybe they would attack, right? Something, they somebody, were, but... Um, they was on the way, they, they had a quest that uh, um, the leader took. And the leader is called Liam Ste Steelwell. Okay, so Steelwell is a good word. Right? <laughs> Liam Steelwell. <laughs> is this a reference I don't get? No, just, just the name that jumped Le into my head. Leader of Oh, yeah. Merc yeah, that's, that's totally a random, random ass name. <laughs> Liam. <laughs> Liam. Steel. I'm going to tell him about this. Steel. It, 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 it wasn't even based on him, it was but, uh, based on Liam Neeson more than anything. Okay, <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, I believe we have somebody based on Trelawney as well, so that's okay. <laughs> um, right, so leader of the Merc team is Liam Steelwell. Right, so, what did he, so he saw in you this great potential as a great fighter. Um, you get the job done, so you go and what did he ask you to do? Um initially to be his squire of sorts to be trained by him right okay so you were on the way to becoming a knight then i say squire of sorts because it's a mercenary band so not actually like a so if what you're saying knight. is he's actually sir liam steelwell <laughs> yes we're gonna go with that now okay sir liam steelwell makes sense if they're like chivalrous right um, and if you squired for him that would be because you want to become a knight Squired to Liam, unless you don't want to be squired to him. 
No, no. We, we are, we are, I'm Squire to Squire to Liam. Are you still Squire to Liam? Because... No. Okay. Right, so let's talk about the what got you your name, right? Because we still don't really have a why you were well known. Because something must have happened that meant your name was said, right? Indeed, we're building a backstory of yeah. how we joined the mercenaries. So, what happened? What, what were you asked to do? What did Sir Liam Steelwell entrust you to do that got you a name that you abandoned? Um, I, I was part of like the vanguard of sorts and every single time he would come back like Marcus would come back from the vanguard with the like if they were attacking a like a camp of orcs he'd come back with a York chieftain said he would like he'd go in there he'd fight and he'd like by the time the rest of the army came up the fight was more or less over the the vanguard that um right, so Marcus, Marcus Marcus collected trophies from his opponents. Okay. E.g. heads, etc. This was very frowned upon. Evidently, uh, but, okay. So, first, uh, <laughs> Liam <all> disapproves. <laughs> right, okay. So, is it well known within the Merc Guild then that you are? More specifically, so you changed your name so they don't find you. Yes. Cool. And approves. So, when this happened, did Liam kick you out while you were squired to him? I take it. Um, he didn't want to kick me out because of um of the fact that if he could train me properly, uh, properly and turn me away from collecting trophies, mm. he thought I'd be the next leader as a mercenary mm. or the. Okay, I wanted to train. Something changed. They 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 went they went they took a quest from I need a random evil guy's name. Okay, why would the chivalrous people take a quest from evil people? Because they didn't know it's evil. Right, okay. So it was in disguise. Interesting. So would he Right. Mundane, magical, upper class, lower class, there's your tags. What do you want? Trained I uh, wanted to trade Marcus up as new leader. Um, however, job from and then right. So, the person you took the job name. from are they upper upper class, lower class? Uh, they are. They were disguised as lower class, so right, but they okay. would still they would be upper class. So they've kind of got like I'll reveal like we'll do the actual name like this. So the guy they actually took from was a lower class. Okay, so who who was this person? Were they like like the head of a town or a organization of some kind, or they, like, like a clan of people? Were they what race were they? They were an elf. Okay, and from elf, uh, was it like know, a clan leader then? Yes, it was a clan leader. Elf clan leader, right? Okay. And let's get you a name for them, shall we? Yes. Let's get an elf name. Cool. Let's go with this because I can see it. <laughs> Philosphemis. Folas. Folas. Yeah, Folas. So, Folas. Hired the part or the the Merc group to do what? What was like troubling Folas and his clan? There or was her clan, maybe his clan. I don't know. There was a disturbing aurora coming from a mountain, and they were sent to investigate and stop this aurora if they could. Right. So it was to investigate the bad aurora. Okay. Right. How'd that turn out? Not very well. The uh, the they didn't take all of the mercenary guild, but they took a good number, possibly half, to go deal with the situation. Half the merc company uh, went to investigate, I do. And then they fought their way through this temple. They saw. Um, right, right, so you got there, there was a temple. Right, okay. 
Um, temple of what? Or to what? Um, it just seemed to be like a dark temple. The Master of Egypt Order wasn't sure who the temple was there worshipping. Right, so I'm going to put sinister temple discovered. Okay. And who did you find in there, or what did you find in there? Uh, in there, there was... Hmm. Also, everybody, welcome to the game. It's just me and Callum, just so you know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll wrap up that one question I asked him in a minute. <laughs> it was full of... like, dark elves. Right, so there are dark elves. Right, okay. Full of dark elves what makes a dark elf why like what would make you consider them a dark elf is it just an elf that does evil or uh, are they visibly they, different they are visibly different their skin color is a lot darker like a purpley blue hue and they have so red eyes racist here, aren't we? Right, so they are drow dark elves are essentially drow and Evil, okay. So are all drow evil? The ones Marcus has met, yes. Right, okay, that's fine. Keep in mind you don't like you're just answering for what you know, so that's fine. And um, full of dark elves. What were they up to? What were they doing? Worshipping a hilt. Okay. Like a blade hilt. Worshipping a hilt of a blade. Okay, cool. Um, I thought it's trying to autocorrect hilt to girl. Hilt, no, thank you. Hilt of a blade. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, what was the outcome of that investigation to the Dark Temple of Dark Elves? Um, a lot, a lot of the group that went there uh, died fighting the Dark Elves. It was. Um, Stronger than the mercenary company for, and uh, Marcus was severely injured by um, some of the uh, the dark elves. Uh, they eventually won the fight, and Marcus went over to the the hilt. The, he then grabbed hold of the hilt uh, to go inspect it. He then heard whispers telling him to complete the blade. Right. Okay. The um, the whispers told him to go forge this blade, but he would need the blood of his allies. So he he killed his the the rest of the mercenary company that okay, was in the so temple. Marcus hears whispers from the hilt saying, "Complete the blade." Uh, he then kills the Merc uh, allies, so say, that remain after they killed the Dark Elves, or are they still around? After they killed the Dark Elves. I uh, mean, after the battle with the Dark Elves. Okay. Alright, so let me put that in here. Elves leaving. Only Marcus in the temple. Right? Yep. So. He didn't manage to kill all of them. One of them got away. One of what, the Merc Thank guys? You. Yeah, one of the Merc mercenaries was able to escape. One Merc escaped. And told the leader, I assume. Told yes. Sir Liam. Sir Liam. About what happened. Uh, cool. What happened to the hilt? Uh, when he killed the innocents, the blade came forth from the hilt and showed a sinister blade. It was quite a... So did like the blood and stuff all form the blade? or? Yes. Hope you're not plagiarising uh, Keepers of the Golden Gate. That session where Cromberg gets a cool as fuck blood axe. Nope. Good. But if you aren't sure about that, go watch all of it on our other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna plug again. It's fine. All right. Help formed from the from the bodies. 
blood and bodies and bodies of the dead. Okay. So, is that the sword you have? Mm-hmm. It is, its name is Life Drinker. Okay, okay. Do you want to describe it? It's, um, it's quite a huge um, sword. One might, uh, it, you could wield it with two hands, one, one hand. Um, it's quite a messy looking blade, while also being sinister. And those who have fought against this blade would say it's very forceful. Okay. Messy, forceful, sinister. Right, you. So, essentially, you're wanted by the Steelwell Merc Company. Right, interesting. Dear gods, wanted. wanted by the Steelwell Merc Company. I love how we had I befriended and fixed a poor wolf pup and it became my doggo. Uh, we had my parents died so I learned magic from an elf and I want to go learn from other elves. And we have <laughs> I got like picked because I was a prodigy and then I killed all of my my buddies and the one might have said he was the chosen one. And then uh, bring balance to the po oh, and, wait, uh, and then uh, I got a uh, a, a cool blade out of it, and I wanted because of that bit. Cool, I got a cool sword. Um, yeah, I was thinking the entire time, Damakin! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, though, Damakin Skywalker, right? Um, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. I'm going to ask this really dangerous question now, right? Mm-hmm. In fact, I'll ask it in a second. Are you, I'm going to put you back to the main page, going to tell us your alignment? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious listening to the story, right? I mean, you know, some people stayed awake through that. So, let's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did, I took notes. Uh, right, so. Are you gonna. Uh, yes, I am evil. Okay, and what is your trigger for this uh, alignment? The blade has. is. The blade whispering to him, say, uh, has said, if he could make the blade, he could do whatever, to, uh, whoever, do whatever he wants to anyone. He could fight whoever, but he cannot leave an enemy alive. Yeah. So the actual specific wording I was looking for there was kill a defenseless or surrendered enemy. Is the trigger for that? Cool. 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 Right. So, based on that, I'll wait and see if we've got a. People back PMing me as we speak. Right. Anything else? This is my dangerous question. Now. Anything else you'd like to tell me about your <laughs> character? Feel free to. I mean, I've been enjoying the story so far. Anything else I need to know? <laughs> right. Um, Are your in fact? There we go. Is your family? Is the the serpent spear family still alive? No. His uh, first. His first. Uh... Fam is dead. Okay. <laughs> He killed them. Wow. He killed the entire village. <laughs> the women and children? As a, as a right to try bonding themselves to this blood. <laughs> yes, of the women and children too. <laughs> and his village, a uh, village, uh, the women and children to <laughs> gods. <laughs> um, I don't want sued, Star Wars, okay? So let's. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it a bit less. Uh, that's fine. We can have a video. He just, he just killed everyone. No innocence was spared. You put that. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's something. My, my Word document's freezing, which is annoying. I don't want it to freeze. I want it to finish doing what it's doing. And then unfreeze, quite frankly. There we go. Perfect. It's unfrozen. Right. So. Interesting. Hmm. So your family's dead, you killed them, and you killed your village, and uh, the women and children too. Yes. All for the sword. All for the sword. Right. Okay. Live or die for the sword. Yeah, right. Um, interesting. Okay. I think that's 
enough, yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. Um, I like it though, it's good. Got a lot to work with there. Can I make sure I've got everybody's names so I can find them easier? Good, good, good. Um, based on that, does uh, Sibylla or Kitty want to add anything to their backstory in addition <laughs> to what we've had so far? <laughs> All right. Um, um, I don't know. I think well, in my case, a lot of it will come out as. A that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's that's completely fine. Um, I'm just laughing at the character log document. You've just got like about two, three, four. There's about ten lines for like both mine and <laughs> Sibylla. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like two heckin' paragraphs of story <laughs> for Cavill. You know he's gonna die first, right? You just know it <laughs> because of that. <laughs> and then we'll do this again. We will have a nice in-depth backstory. I like it, it's good time. fun. Okay, all expense goes into keeping him alive now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's okay. Like I've kind of figured out if my character dies, I could just grab another one of the Lewis yeah, the clam. clam. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've still got an animal. <laughs> I shall go and avenge my aunt. Mm -hmm. hey, I can just grab one of the Steel Ball mercenaries. Yeah, but then your job's kind of done, right? Because what was your job? Let's go make sure Cavill dies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. done. The good thing is, though, whoever kills Cavill yeah, if he's from Steelwell, you could then just play him or her. Yep. Perfect. So guys, you just need a new fighter as he wipes the blood of Cavill off his sword. Um, That'll help. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, let us look at bonds now because you all work together for some reason. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's find out what that could be. So, if you have bonds done already, good. Yep. If not, do them now and then we'll talk about them. Right, so who has done their bonds? So you'll need I one for each of them. Okay. I have. Cool. Well, we'll give Callum a second to let his throat rest. And <laughs> we'll, uh, let's go for a uh, Adri. Do you want to tell me who your, what your bonds are? Like, who have you got? Like, first of all, who who who's your first bond with? Um. So I was gonna say that Cavill, right? Mm -hmm. Cavell, sorry, uh, is going to be. Uh, playing an important role in events to come. I have foreseen it! Perfect. Right, so let me take a note of this. Right, so... And I, so, Cavill will play an important role in events to come. It's almost like he's a PC in an RP. Um, what is the important role? Do you know? Was that vision like made clear to you? Or are you still to find out what that is? Let's say that I kind of see himself like jumping in front of somebody else that would have received what was definitely going to be a mortal wound. Right, he so he actually in becomes and noble. With his weapon up, kind of like deflects that. Well, maybe he was just paid to keep that person alive, I don't know. Yeah, so defends. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll put in heroically. Uh, defends. <laughs> And oh God, this another. goes so well with one of my. Uh, it's okay. My bonds. Don't worry. It's a uh, heroically defense. Why is that not a word? Heroically. <laughs> is heroically a word? I don't know. Yeah. Heroic like. Yeah. Okay. No, it definitely is. <laughs> Defend. My, my spell checker argues. Heroically. Defense. Yeah. I don't know where you're trying to type. Oh, Hero Cali. There we go. Harry away, Kylie. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. Heroically. Well, yep. Thanks, accents. Um, heroically defends another. Um, who is the other person? Have you seen that, or is that yet that's to be? That's the thing that's blurry. Like. Uh, Perfect. Yet not to really be. Not really sure, but like for some reason he's, he's like jumping it. in the way of nature for somebody, I like which it. is you know uncommon and whatever. Perfect. Um, right, and your next one. I would say that Kitty is keeping an important secret from me. Excellent. So, um... I kind of judged you, I just like, yeah, she's going to be the secretive one. <laughs> wow, typecast. Um, oh, more like person character cast. <laughs> now, here's the question, right? Now, Kitty, are you keeping a secret from Sibylla? I might be. And it's a secret. 
So the reason I'm asking is either you are, right, and that's fine, we'll discuss what the secret is separately and later, right? Or you're Sibilla not. Is a bit no, no, it's okay. This isn't like Sibylla's she could, part. Uh, she could be in. It could be all in her head. Just I was going to say, that's what I was going to say, but if you aren't, we need to talk about why Sibylla thinks you are, right? <laughs> so, wow. so, is Kitty keeping a secret from Sibylla? Yes or no? Hmm. Because, I mean, keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to know every detail about each other, but there could be something like this means you're specifically withholding something. I would say yes. Perfect. Do you want to say what that is at the moment, or do you want to keep that hush-hush? I don't know what it is, so it will be hush-hush. Okay. Everyone doesn't know. <laughs> okay, I'll put, we'll in, soon know. I'll put in TBC, and if you want at any point me to just come up with it, I will, and I'll tell yeah. you what it is, but I won't obviously tell Sibylla. Um, cool, I like that. Well, it might even tie into the bond that I have with her. That's so. okay, yeah, well, we'll find out in a second. Good, good. Um, I like that. Um, so, Sibylla, what led you to believe Kitty was keeping secrets from you? What about the behaviour or something she's done? Like, wh like, describe why you think that. Probably. Or is this another like vision as thing? As much of a chatterbox as as I am, and you know, always like talking and saying stuff about herself and what she sees in the world and whatever. I'm guessing that Sophie's gonna play Kitty in a slightly more reserved fashion. And to Sibylla that speaks a lot and tells people anything um, that would be like, oh, this person's keeping a secret. No, just that person doesn't talk as much as you do. It doesn't okay. uh, so yeah. give their life story uh, to people. Kitty you know? is too quiet for Sibylla's, Sibylla's liking. Cool. Perfect. That's, so that's why you think that. Good. I like that. Uh, as I said, at some point, me and Kitty will come up with the, the secret. Um, which I love. Uh, right, okay. Who wants to go next for bonds? Let's so again. Callum can rest more, and we'll have we'll have some. Yeah. So, so yeah. My first one is Cavell does not understand life in the wild, so I will teach them. Okay. Perfect. Right. So Cavell is uh, not good out. Doors. I'm going to put from there. Or not good at survival. <laughs> at survival. Uh, like how we survived so far on the run. I don't know. Right. So, Cavill, do you think that's true, or is this just something? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Which is yes. true. Excellent. Good enough. Never mind. Moving on. Next one. So I have guided. Uh, how to heck do you say your name again? Sibylla. Sibylla before and they owe me for it. Ooh. I like it. I like it. So that could be part of the secret. Ooh. Well that works. Right, so what I would say, right, and you just can edit this as you will, so um God names Kitty has guided Come on, that's Sibilla. the easiest one. No no, I know. So Kitty has guided Sibylla when Sibylla this is my thinking, was looking for another elf clan, right? Because if the, the cities are hidden, yeah. Sibylla's a human. But like, I would have kept myself sort of hidden because it would be like a a big taboo if you revealed another's yeah. location. Right, so let me add that to my world notes then, shall I? <laughs> like, I'll wait for the elves do the not freeze. reveal other elves' locations. And also, you would not there's, there would be no point in you telling me where your clan is for because maybe your yeah. clan's not very magic -y? I don't know. Or at least like, not into the types of magic that I'm interested in. Yeah. I mean... Like, you could have... Like, I would have kept to the shadows, as it were, but my freaking key-ass wolf is uh, not exactly camouflage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Like, maybe my wolf could have scared you in the direction kind of thing. Right, so let me add that in then, because I quite like that. So, um, taboo uh, showing where hidden cities are. Or maybe you were drunk at some point, and you were like, <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, I went to visit that guy. I had a fancy floor from the other clan 50 miles north of me. And I'm like, oh, 50 <laughs> yeah. no, miles is... north of that place that <laughs> I was like, it is. Drunken stumble like, through the woods, like knocking leaves off and stuff that you can follow a trail to. <laughs> well, to be honest, you could just give me like a rough estimate and I'm not stupid. So you pointed her to another elven head and say, Oh, wait, I am. Right? No, no, I'm not because intelligence, not wisdom. Yeah. So another elf clan... A city and right so you guided her to it but you didn't make it obvious you were there because that's a taboo yeah yeah cool and that was say in need of Sibylla looking for more elves to learn more magic from I assume yeah right um Sibylla would that be right yeah cool um so Sibylla could learn more magics from the elves, because we always established humans aren't good at magic. It's probably why they're good fighters, though, and have merc guilds and stuff. There are mm. more magics from them. Excellent. I like that. It's good. Now, that does mean the secret could be so many things. You're totally right. I like that. Because um, this could have been, for example, right? We'll just throw this out there, but maybe there is like the magic elf capital city. And you were like, nope, definitely cannot even think about showing her where that is. That is a no. I'll show her to, like, the Blackpool Pleasure Beach equivalent. <laughs> you know? Um, if MD's outside the UK and doesn't understand that reference, Google it. Um, other search engines are available. Uh, but yeah, so... I, I'm in the UK and I don't want to find that. <laughs> uh, right, so... Yeah, I think that's good. I think that makes sense. So Sibylla owes Kitty for that, like, that deed, right? Um, the hope is that Sibylla doesn't randomly tell other elves that she did that, right? Um, but I stuck to the shadow. She didn't know it was me. Well, no, she would so have she to have, couldn't right? couldn't tell him. She would have to have known because you guided her and, she, like, she owes you for it. So you'd need to have, you know? It'd be something that I'd reveal to her when I needed something. So right. It's like, no, you owe me. She'll be like, why? And I'm like, because you found the elf place. It's like, oh, it was you. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. So you want to keep that secret from her? Yeah, that's the, that could be the secret. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Let's see. So Billa does not... Doesn't know it was... Kitty. Her. Right, now Sibylla, my question to you. Do you know Kitty yes. was the one that guided you or do you have no clue? Mm. Because you could just let Kitty think that you don't know, right? Or it is in fact True. you were guided and you don't know who guided you, just know you got there. Um, and then this elf turned up when you left and whatever. I could say that, uh, like, Cause the way I see it is I don't understand why she did that, because I know it's taboo, right, okay. so that might be a secret, like, why would she do that, like, even though I've asked, like, why, like, does she see me as a friend? I mean, I'm human, why well, would she see a human as a friend? Like, this way, Kitty, see, like, from Kitty's point of view, she thinks Sibylla doesn't know who guided her, right? So Kitty thinks Sibylla doesn't know. My question yeah, is, yeah. does Sibylla actually know, or does she not? Well, I do want to play her as a bit of a head in the clouds person, so I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna assume that she doesn't. That's okay, she's that's fine, we can work with that. But she does, she's seen Kitty act a bit shifty about And that's probably why you think she's got secrets from so you, right? So that's why she's <laughs> assuming she's got secrets, but she doesn't actually know that it was Kitty that sent her that way. It plays perfectly into your bond with her as well. Perfect. Sus. Uh, just, but is suspicious of Kitty. Perfect. Last but not Essie. Callum. Cool. Alright, so my first bond is with Kitty. Oof. I am shocked. <laughs> okay. And I am sworn to protect Kitty the Wick. Okay. I have. Let's, ah! un let's unpack this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cavill is sworn to protect 
Kitty. Why? Um, during a fight where Cavill was fighting, I guess, some of the Steel World mercenaries. Like they ambushed you when you was something yeah. in the it was, they ambushed me and I was losing a fight. Kitty came out and helped protect me. So in in return, I have sworn to protect her. Right, you have a life debt. You big mm -hmm. Star Wars nerd. Um, <laughs> uh, Kitty saved Cavill's life. Okay, cool. That's simple. I like that. Yeah. Um, in return of that then, how does Kitty feel about having this sinister looking dude that you saved in fact there's a better question right so you've got Callum describe your character's look again right well I've actually put a picture in the character log now so that's fine I need it described with words for the recording dead eyes a battered helmet scarred skin and a ravaged body right so Kitty when you seen the steel well marks, do you know, like, they're quite well known, as we've established, so Kitty must be aware, you've travelled a bit, right? So, yeah. you're aware of the steel well marks, mostly human, right? Uh, if not all human, I think they were all human. Uh, you've seen them attack a man in a battered helmet with dead eyes, scarred skin, and you chose to step in and save him. Or did you? Did you in fact miss him and hit them? <laughs> and thus they all turned red. You know all their name tags. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you tell us like, how I that just, happened? I was only kicked a chicken. The whole village depended <laughs> upon me. Um, <laughs> Your crimes have been reported. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, um, like so from. Kitty's I just thought it was yeah. really unfair, and I just had like a gut instinct that w he needed to be protected. Mm -hmm. So you did. And, you, you know. so you did aim to protect him essentially. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And now that he follows you around, right, how does that feel? Are you cool with that? Because, I mean, let's face it, he does have a sinister-looking, a uh, huge sword. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty chill with it. To be fair, your wolf's going. quite, like, within thematic keeping, right? So, yeah. big scary wolf, big scary man. Also, yeah, also Sibella is here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very odd ragtag group at the minute. So far, I can't wait to like, like Scott and Stu join. You've just got me and <laughs> characters being very like, we will hide ourselves, no one no one looks at our faces, and then you've just got like, Sibella so, so like, la 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 la, I'm going to heal things. I love it. It's great. Um, yeah. I just feel like we're both Raven from Teen Titans. In <laughs> Star what is it? Um, uh, oh God, what's it called? No, and Star I'll totally be oh, like, Star Starfire. You guys attack something. Starfire, that's the one. <laughs> I'll totally be like, you guys attack something, and I didn't, I don't realize that you guys attacked it, and I just go and heal it. And you know, <laughs> like, no, no, this is food. Angry is casting, not helpful casting. <laughs> Angry casting. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, um, so good. Uh, right. Brilliant. So you, you have someone sworn to protect you. Um, which is pretty good and useful, right? Um, let's see... Kitty said Cavill's life... Uh, in 10 Sean Alley. Perfect, right. So... Next question, why do you all work together? Because I feel like you're in a position to answer that now. Well, I don't... I haven't said my bond with Sibylla yet. Oh god, maybe you have. I'm skipping ahead. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't, I've not read my third bond either. You have a third bond? You have a yeah. third one? With who? The list had three, so I thought there was three. Never mind. Okay, no, I was a bit confused about what to do with the third one, but that's even better. It's okay, because keep in mind, you've still, got, you've still got um, Scott and Stu, eventually. Ah, okay. With. Yeah, fair enough. So yep. that could sort it that way. Mm -hmm. I can have multiple bonds with one person, but I just feel like it's a bit of a shame when they join and you go, cool, we don't care. You yeah, know. who are you? <laughs> and user also We've already here. got a group. Because the thing is, they're going to have to now fit in with what they think of what users have made as a world. Yeah. Um, which is interesting, right? Secret elves with all the magic and humans that fight stuff and kill dark elves. Okay, I'm liking it. And Sibylla. So you're a uh, bond with Sibylla? Cavill? 
possibility back owes me their life, whether they admit it or not. Right. Interesting. You tell me why do they? Why does Cavill think that? He believes to have saved her from the steel world mercenaries. Right. So why was she in danger from the mercenaries? She might not have been. He just killed a camp of mercenaries, and she was nearby. He believes they are the enemy, so he killed them. She walked by. It was like I saved you. Right. Okay. Spell it was her life to Cavill. Did they? Did they like go for like crazy people? Is that it? Like. No, I'll it's just that he's, he's a crazy it's person. Like the mercenaries too. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but but I'm not supposed to be all there either. So, you know, yeah. So maybe like you're happy with that outcome. Okay, that was good. You know. I convinced you that they were going to come kill you. <laughs> they were right. going to kill you. I saved well, let's, you. Let's you let's so Sibylla owes her life to Cavill for him killing nearby Steelwell Mercs. Uh, what does Sibylla think of that? Right. So Cavill has said to you that he saved your life from the Steelwell Mercs that were obviously trying to kill you. What do you think about this? I guess, does Sibylla... I'm sure they just wanted to be friends. Right, okay, so Sibylla does <clears throat> not believe this. It doesn't matter. They, <laughs> they owe me. Well, well, they like, she doesn't really have a sense for danger. She's like, but they wanted to be friends. Yeah, that works for me, because again, you don't need to agree with each other's bonds. That's how we get RP interactions as we go. Madness. Right, okay, so... Did... Right. Right, I need so... to be back a quick sec. Cool. So, Cavill met, was saved by Kay, and he saved Sibylla, according to him. I'm assuming this happened at the one event, right? This has to have been the one moment. So I'm assuming that Sibylla and Kitty were travelling first, and then happened by these mercs and I like the idea that Kitty's in a tree, a bow in hand, wolf at the bottom of the tree or doggo and sees obviously you know like a sniper taking position sees uh, the steel war mercs pounce on this, this guy and you're like well that's hardly fair then you do that thing where your sniper scope scours the battlefield and you just see uh, Sibylla walking towards him just without a care in the world. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess I'll join the fight. Foom, arrow flies. Sounds about right. <laughs> that, that, that seems to fit, given the narrative we have so far. So, yeah. Unless you have anything else you can think of that would have made you guys meet. Um, any thoughts? Sounds alright, to be honest. Because, yeah. like, I'd have known who she was. And been like, well, you should probably oh, be travelling at that helpful. point because you've probably already, remember you've already guided her whether she knows it or not, right? So that's already yeah. happened. Um, and then you would so the fact that she's out on her own kind of thing tells me that she's learned enough to go on her own way. Yeah. In theory, she should have, right? Yeah, <laughs> she survived <laughs> this long, and whether that's just falling down a pit, healing her broken leg, and just continuing to walk, we'll never know. Um. Yeah, I like it. Um, unless, Sibylla, you've got anything else you'd like to like say about how you use mechs, I think that's probably a good moment for you all to have like, interacted and you just travel well, together. She's an elf. I'm looking for elves. Yeah. So, well, and you've just been more like, or less, the you... second I saw her and realised she's an elf, I'd be like following her like a lost puppy, yeah. you know, take me to your people. Makes sense. I like it. Good. Or um, like, teach me magic, and then she's like, I don't really do magic. I'd be like, oh. Okay, take it to your people. <laughs> and yeah. then basically she couldn't get rid of me, so eventually she kind of like got used to the fact that I'm around. No, you did... Right, so I think you probably learned... You definitely learned your healing magic from... Tree Bark, Eric. right? Definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Tree Bark. Sure. And I think maybe... Maybe you learned yeah. other magic from that hidden elven city, right? Because I think that would make sense that you actually trained with them. Because the fact that you found it and had elven magic meant they were like, you're worth training. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to add mm. that into your, your notes for you because I like that. 
Uh, where are we for Adri? Right, cool. Uh, it was trained in magic by hidden elven city people uh, as she could already find the city and cast elven magic and that's obviously what tree bark taught you which you like that doesn't make sense so whatever kitty did she made sure that obviously Sibylla ma made it to the city so mm -hmm. you know when you were looking for clues or whatever and whatever like kitty's interactions in this in the dark and the secret meant you got to this hidden elven city um which we'll name just now let's just get a name for that uh, we're gonna call it a uh, Helenan. there we go we'll type that in there i'll call it that hidden city of helen and that's where you learned your magic uh mm -hmm. And then you left there, wandered a bit, bumped into these mercs. Obviously, this elf was still following you. She steps in, saves our evil man merc, and that's how you guys quest together. No. I call me back with us. Yep. Good. Are you so to describe? What, I don't know how much of that you caught, but you met during the fight in which you claim to have saved Sibylla, right? Mm -hmm. That's where you met. And how long has it been since that moment that he's met? Well, I hadn't met Kitty at this point. Nope, he's a vault member. He's all meet at that because oh, at that point. she. Yep, she's the one that makes sure you you win that fight. Ah, uh, okay. So she sees you fighting them. Sibylla wanders into the battle. You kill everybody. Think you've saved Sibylla, uh, but really it's Kitty that saved you. Okay. Right. So I'm just gonna make that the one event because it makes sense. These are all there. It's a nice crossover. So does Kitty then jump down and tell me that she? Well, saved this me isn't us battle? RPing this moment. This is just me saying how long has it been since that event. You all meet there. That is fact. You meet there. How long has it been since? You can all answer this. It isn't just Calum that can answer this. Because you all work together. Thought, uh me and Callum's character would have like had a bit of travelling time together first. Right, so what did you just know each other before this event then? I like cuz I was I kind of thought cuz it's in my head it's really well, hard keep for in me mind, to don't don't think about what you have thought say what is. Right? Okay. Cuz that's how so, the system works. So I've can, said you've met you've all met during this event. So let's just start there. Right? That's so, the easiest way for everybody to have met. Kitty saved my life, but I turn around to say I saved the Billard's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but keep in mind, really the thing is though, but Cavill doesn't, Cavill doesn't necessarily know Kitty saved his life. Uh, yeah, she right? could tell me and I'd be like, oh! Remember, right. these are truths to the character, not to the world. So. Right, right, okay, that makes more sense. Like how Kitty said, oh well, I mean, am I keeping a secret? No, that makes Sibylla paranoid. But Sibylla is convinced her she's keeping a secret, right? So, but Kitty is in fact keeping a secret in this example. So, it doesn't matter what your character thinks, it's what we're saying is. So, okay. I'm saying you've met during this moment. You and Callum's character can have known each other, so Kitty and um, Cavill, sorry, can have met previously. But this is the party meeting as a unit. Okay? So, Kitty and Cavill. God, so many kids. Are you? Did you meet before this? Then, so is that why Kitty then steps up to save her person she recognises? Do we want to go down that route? Don't know. That's what Sophie had mentioned earlier. Yeah. No. I'd, I'd like be... maybe I'd seen you stumbling through the like the forest kind of thing and been like, yeah, oh, okay. Like maybe this is near. Like maybe it's been near your home. Right, so maybe you've kept an eye on yeah. this area, um, or it's at least near um, that other elven city, right? So you, 
you've seen him obviously maybe try and hide out here and obviously Steelwell has tracked him down yeah that and sense. that's why I felt the need to protect him mm-hmm. that makes sense obviously he thinks he's the one protecting Sibylla because Sibylla wanders into the battlefield anyway and he kills everybody and tries to maybe that's how he justifies it to himself you know like this is why you justify killing all these people so kind of I wouldn't say effortlessly but you know yeah the enemy yeah Right. They had they 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 pulled me to the place where they're just I, jealous of your power, right? Yeah, they're, they're jealous. I was the best, and I will show them all that I am the best. And from your point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> they are evil in his point of view. <laughs> the worst part. Oh dear God. Okay, cool. So, how long has it been since that day? Hmm. I mean, it could have been now, right? I don't mind if that was now, but like, the idea is that all the party work together. So regardless of this, you all will know each other and all work together. That's a fundamental to making an RP work. So in this moment, was this some time ago? Was it like a year ago? Was it ten years ago? Was it an hour ago? Like, I feel like you probably have a re- like you would need a reason to all kind of trust each other, right? In so far as your bonds allow. So. How long have you been together? Are we doing this from the get-go, from this point? Or are we going to, like, maybe travel a week in the future till we're at a town? As I said, my, my advice would be that you have worked together for a bit. So you A, trust each other, and B, would sleep next to each other without worrying about being stabbed by each other, right? Mm. I would suggest this was some time ago right. when you met. Okay. So we'll like call it like eight months. Okay. And do you got any reason to change that? No. No. Cool. Right. Uh, are you out in the wild just now at present time? Or are you in a settlement of some kind? So a village, a town, a city, etc. We'd say we're in like a tavern. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my question. A village, a town, a city? Oh, yeah, no. A village. Yeah, okay. okay. A village. In a village. Um, right, we're going to call Where that. Where there wouldn't be too, like... They'd be used to people passing through, really. Yeah, so kind of like remote, then. A remote village. Yeah. Remote yeah. village. We're used to adventures. Um, used to outsiders. Uh, so, I'd say indifferent to them, then. Uh-huh. Not a happier side or whatever. Cool, perfect. And like they might be a bit wary, but ultimately coin is coin. Yeah. They're paying for drinks. Exactly. Yeah. Coin is As long as you don't start fights in there and break things. Um we're gonna call it coinswood because that's perfect. There we go. Coinswood. Uh what type of village? Human village to get? Or um, half lane dwarf, elven. It could be like a, a sort of outsider village where. Okay, it's so like a mixed mismatch. race village, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's why they wouldn't really bat an eye too much at us. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. I like that. Good, good. Um, why are you here? I mean, for that reason, really. People don't question. So, here because it is safe for the most part mm. okay i like that right so is this where you'd operate from normally yeah this could be like a like options. base of sorts i'll put down okay perfect um right so these all work for like an adventuring guild for example um to make money taking on jobs yeah um, i have... was thinking like this this could be where we get our quests from as such Adventuring Guild is here. Okay, all right. By the way, this uh, this village is called Everwinter. Really? Because I, I I wrote it was Coinswood, but if you want to change it, you can do. I mean, <laughs> I, like, I, I was gonna be like, I kind of like Everwinter. That way, it could be like a snowy area, and that's why it's remote. Okay, right. Okay. Like up in the mountains. Ever. Like obviously. Right. So not again, lawsuits, please. Um, I don't know where Everwinter is from, so. Never winter. Never winter night. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and it just took the end off it. Yeah, you did. So, but no, that's what's called. It's ever winter, right? Um, ever winter. Uh, I'd say it's probably more of a town then, right? It's a town. Um, if it's got the adventuring guild in it, right? So. Oh yeah. Right, so I'll make it a remote town. Um, and remote town in the mountains then in the snowy mountains okay used to outsiders indifferent to them coin is coin and user here because safe here there's an adventuring guild here that gets you coin perfect so you just have a job at the moment you're on a job right what is it is it to Retrieve something, kill something, uh, find something out, clear something out, return with something, return with a person, track to a person, kill a person, hunt a person. You tell me. What are you here for? What is your current job? The more dangerous it is, the more money it's going to pay you. I'm just going to put that in there, just so you know. So, Cavill wouldn't really... Sorry, let me get in character. I wouldn't really want to say what miss a mission would do. I'd just go along because I'm protecting. Yeah, so you're um, you're there as like the muscle, right? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so in that case, then Sibylla and Kitty are probably the ones that pick the jobs, which I love. I love the idea that Sibylla points at one of the kind of that one. Yeah. So Sibylla, let's let's talk about that. what is the current mission. What is your quest? What have you used to do? We decided to go inspect like the woods near this village because they were saying that there's should... goblin activity. Okay, what's nearby? But what I heard in the what I've read in the 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 um, you know the thing was you know their sheep missing, not the fact that they already like they knew they spotted goblins. Like that kind of sort of like. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. So it's the wood nearby have a goblin problem, and what was the other thing you were going to say, Sibylla? No. So I was saying that what I read from the ad mm -hmm. essentially was the bit about the sheep disappearing, okay. and I told blanked over the fact you no know, suspected goblins for me like, oh my god, the poor sheep. We have to go and find them and save them and whatever. So and then obviously have, Kitty would be the one um, that like missing. reads everything and he's like, oh yeah, probably goblins. Okay. Who's nearby? I'm assuming, right, have, Kitty? Yeah. Have a known goblin problem. Okay, yeah, perfect. And you will be paid fifty coin. If you get an answer uh, about what's been actually happening, if you can find them proof, answer slash proof. And let's see, another 50 coin to bring back the sheep. Coin to return the sheep. Okay, yeah, I like this. This is the job user one. Um, I'm going to call it... Sorry guys, I've turned this on a wild sheep chase. It's called Sheepless Nights. Just so you know the quest. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. I have no regrets. Sheepless Nights. Um, oh dear gods. We'll find out how many regrets we all have in a second. Well, <laughs> let's get started then, right? So, you are in town, right? You are in Everwinter. Dear gods. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have got the mission. I... Cool. The fact that, obviously, Sibylla comes back with this quest note and whatnot, and then sits it down and goes, Look, there's missing sheep. And then, is this the part where the other two lead in and go, Ah, because of goblins. I see. So is this something you're particularly daunted about? Do you think it's going to be difficult? Or do you, are you like pretty confident about this particular quest? I can't well, always ask them easy. nicely. They'll definitely give them back. <laughs> I'm a bit key. Goblins can be tricky. People think they're very low rank. 
which is why it's probably been stuck there for a bit. Um, but they could be nasty little cretins. So uh, goblin slayer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's something I'd probably feel confident with, but you'd have to get a, a grasp of how big the problem is. Because mm-hmm. if it's one or two, whatever. But if it's a whole freaking like clan of them, then yeah. Yeah, it can be difficult, right? Um, but I mean, we'll see, right? We'll definitely see. Uh, yeah. Okay, so can yeah, let's let's we're gonna do a journey from where you are to the woods where you think the goblins are gonna be, right? So we'll do this. This is going to be one of our moves. All right, and we'll just get started. Uh, it's a very different system to D&D, isn't it, guys? A um, little bit. Yep. Uh, we're going to go to the special moves, and we're going to undertake a perilous journey, right? Because the mountains aren't specifically safe. That's why this place is remote. Um, so, and you guys are traveling towards enemy territory. So, undertake a perilous journey, right? Uh, when you travel through hostile territory, choose one member of the party to act as trailblazer, one to scout ahead, and one to be quartermaster. The same character can have two jobs. If you don't have enough party members, uh, treat that job as if it rolled a six. Right? So, the quartermaster is in charge of the rations it takes to get here. The trailblazer uh, is in charge of how long it takes to get there. And the scout is in charge of whether or not these are ambushed or if you can get the drop on people, etc. So getting the drop on someone means you just get attacked and surprise them, essentially. If there are something to be surprised, like you might not, there might be nothing to surprise you guys, but we'll find that out as we play. So, who is taking which role? We need a quartermaster, a trailblazer and a scout. Who's doing what? I'll probably be the scout. Right, okay. And that's nothing to do with your racial ability at all, is it? (laughs) No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, right, okay, so do you want to take that in chat then that you'll do scout? Perfect. Uh, right, we've got Trailblazer and Quartermaster. Who's doing what out of you two that are left? Um, I'll be Quartermaster. Right, type that in our chat as well. And that leaves. I keep wanting to call you Trelawney. I really do. It's Sibylla. Uh, Sibylla. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have told you that. that <laughs> I <word> know. <laughs> it's totally political. It's like when Scott couldn't not <laughs> say Zadreka for everything and made me say it. <laughs> uh, I called my Meowth oh, a Zadreka in Pokemon Shield. Um, I'm sure Scott would approve. Uh, right, can you type in chat, Adri, for me that you are the Trailblazer? Which you got to love that you've let the ditzy one be... The one in charge of how long it takes to get there. And that makes perfect sense because obviously like, if you wander off because you find something interesting, they have to stop and go grab you again. Which is perfect. <laughs> My character's a slow walker, so it takes forever. Well, yeah, because Vader had all that mechanical upgrades and he wasn't so angry <laughs> anymore, so yeah. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> right, um, can you type that in chat, Adri? We still need that typed in chat. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Life imitating art and all that. Is it one word? I think that's fine. That's perfect. Right. right. So, because of the kitty, we have your racial move. Right? Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, when you undertake a perilous journey through, oh. take you. We're, we're losing you, or oh, I'm losing you. Oh, <clears throat> my internet's gone a bit slow. Okay, we got um, undertake a perilous journey. Uh, undertake Bellows journey through wilderness. Whatever job you take, you succeed as if you rolled a ten plus. Right, so just type ten plus in uh, to chat. And that was your rule. Well done. Um, <laughs> cool. Now, can the other two roll for me? So it's undertaking a perilous journey, and let me load this up for you guys. So okay. I don't know if it's actually. I may have listed there, so what we need is, let's see, 
I bring up the move again. Let's see, so you roll plus what? What are we rolling with? I think it was a wisdom. Yeah, so rolling plus wisdom. So can everybody click? And by that I mean just the two doing this, not getting. Mm -hmm. So click on your wisdom. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Three seconds to rearrange all the stuff on my screen just now, so it makes more sense to me. Not that that's likely, but I'll try. Right, what are doing up with? Okay, so perfect, perfect example. <laughs> it couldn't have been more perfect. Uh -oh. Sibylla, <laughs> <laughs> the one in charge of the timekeeping of how long this takes to do this. Okay, so da -de -da -de -da. it's perfect. Right, see on your page on your character sheet up at the very top right, it's got XP. Put yeah. one in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you failed, so you get to mark XP. Yeah. Yep. Perfect example. Right, so that becomes a one. Um, also, guys, just as a quick note as well, if you do level up, you will subtract the XP from your total. It's not like D&D &D where it's a running total. Okay? Okay. Cool. You spend it in this one. Cool. Uh, right, so... We'll deal with Cavils first. Okay, or Cavell. Cavill, Cavill. Uh, right, so on a 7 to 9, right, each roll performs their job as expected to the number of normal rations is consumed. So does everyone want to mark off a ration? So go into your rations on your character sheets and mark one off. Yeah, that's something I didn't add. Whoops. I mean, yeah, whoops. Well, I did the exact same. Did you even have rations? All I have is adventuring gear, so... It should have said on your build, so if you got your cheat sheets for your classes... No, I don't think I did get then. Into gear. Yeah, I don't think I did either. So, the, wi the wizard okay. has dungeon rations, that's right. And let's see, does the fighter have dungeon rations? Yep, looks like we have a winning player so far, Katie. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, because it says in gear tag, it says ration, five uses, will that not be... Yeah, mark it down to four. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure where it would be, but... Where are you looking? I'm looking in equipment. Cool. So you didn't add them. So you'll need to add them. So back into the compendium, dungeon rations, drag and drop, and then mark off a use. Yeah, yeah, no, like in the the compendium. In the so just, just type dungeon rations or rations. And it should bring it up for you. Ah, yes, 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 yes. And initially we had oh, yeah. five? It says it's, it's already tagged, so if you look at the tags, it says rations, five uses. Ah. So mark that down to four. Sure, sure. Everybody up to date on their yeah. rations and such now? Yep. So, good. That means the quartermaster managed to get you here and ration out your food successfully. Um, however, and here here is the fun part. So, you have been mm -hmm. lost for, this should have taken about maybe like two days to get here. Um, it's going to have taken way longer, just because, again, Sibylla got it wrong, right? Like, you've been like, trying to make sure that you just keep going. Um, Basically, you kind of got in the way. Like, you're the one technically leading the party, right? For some reason. The scout's keeping an eye out for people, right? Which you did perfectly. Well done. Um, mm -hmm. So, Kitty kept everybody safe. But every time Kitty turned her head to look out for possible <laughs> threats, your wonderful, your wonderful trailblazer just was like, wait, is this the same tree? Um... And it took twice as long. So every day, mark off another ration. God damn it. That oh. is the cost of your failure. Hmm. Yes. That and obviously the fact that it took like extra time. The joys. Now, that could have been worse because if that happened in addition to Cavill messing up how to like divvy up the supplies to get here, that could have been like pretty much 
all of the rations chucked in, right? So you might have had none for the return journey, in which case you might have to hunt, etc. So, but we'll see how that goes. Right. However, you are now at the mouth of this cave. We are? Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> As you stumble out of the woods. What do you do? Well, um. I equip my short sword. Okay, so you put your bow away. I uh, equip my shield and my my life drinker. So you can one hand this life drinker, can you? This huge sword. It's a ba it's a bastard sword. So it's yeah. a one or two. It's hundred. a bastard sword. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Uh, right, so Sibylla, what do you do? You've managed to get everybody here, you think very successfully of course, um, and you're at the mouth of this cave, uh, and the two of them have drew swords, and Cavill's pulled his shield up. What do you do? And we cannot hear you if you're speaking. No, you blocked out for me. Oh, I just heard I what do you out? do and I'm like, what? Oh, so maybe it's me. Okay, so I was saying, Sibylla, you are at the mouth of this cave. You have Kitty pulling out her short sword. And you've got Cavill pulling out his sinister long sword with his, uh, uh, what do you call it, shield. What do you do? Nope. Can you still hear me, guys? Cause yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so it's just Adri. Adri, hello. Still with us? Hello, hello. Yes, yes. Cool. Sorry. It's okay. Thought I arrived. So, he's arrived at the cave mouth. Kitty's drew her sword. So his cavil got his shield up in his sword. What do you do? I'm looking at them funny, and I'm like, oh, come on, guys, it's just some sheep. I turn my head to her and go, enough, enemies are abound. They are? And then I unsheath my dagger as well. Okay. So, what do you do then? You're all standing at the mouth of this cave. It leads in, it just goes into darkness. And you're standing holding weapons, staring at it. Turn my head to Kitty, waiting for a the go word. All right, we ready? With that, I march forward. Okay, cool. So you head in. Uh, what are you doing about the fact that it's dark? Um. We could do with smoking them out, really. I say we actually build like a little campfire at the very end, at sort of towards the entrance, and like waft the smoke in. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want to tell me? So, I was I say, so Cavill walks halfway in. You sit and have this thought. Hey, wait, come back. <laughs> Just march back to her and look at her. Like we we haven't got any torches, so you're literally going in literally blind. Uh, no, um, you can have torches if you've got an adventuring pack. Remember. I do. Yeah, I've got the adventuring gear. So that's but, remember, remember those things have five uses, and you could just say, "Cool, I bring a torch out of my backpack because of course I've got one because obviously I'd bring one for going into a cave." <laughs> then you'd mark off that into four uses, and you just write somewhere you've got a torch in your notes. Well, I will use one torch to light a fire. So go into your adventuring pack. Uh, well, remember you'd have camping supplies and stuff as well. So yeah, like you can have obviously. You can make a campfire, but this was for him to go into like the dark. So you can have light if you wanted it to go in. Mm. So, for example, you could hold a torch, Kitty, and hold your sword in one hand, torch in the other. He could have his sword yeah. and shield because he can't hold a torch with a sword and shield. Sword and no. shield. Um, or you could give it to your mage who's got like a dagger at the moment. 
I still think setting a fire outside of it and wafting the smoking is better. You say to the others, and then they reply. I just nod. Man, a few words. Gonna make a great yeah, RP like character. <laughs> Right, too. So, is that what you do then? I guess so, since someone's not speaking. That's not. Yeah, I'm, I'd be looking and not really understanding why you're doing that, but being like, what? Huh? Okay. <laughs> just probably just also send the mage in. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I've probably also just seen like a firefly and, you know. Ooh, pretty. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think you're. I think Sibylla's going to be much help when it comes to the, the campfire plan, but it definitely means she's not opposing the campfire plan. Yeah, I just sort of look at her rather exasperated, like... You took you just, so you many days to get us here. <laughs> <laughs> you said you knew the way. <laughs> Never trusting you again. <laughs> mm. But then would you trust her yeah. to be the scout? Like, come on. <laughs> wow. Um, Hold a quartermaster, keep an eye on our rations. This might be the safer <laughs> option, right? That might yeah. be. Um, she might be able to count. Well, okay, so your hey. your hope is to throw in smoke, waft in smoke, to like get the supposed goblins to come out. Yeah. Um, how do you know that wouldn't risk the livestock? Does that cross your mind or do you not care about claiming the extra money? They're probably already dead, to be fair. Yeah, we took long enough to get get in here. They're probably dead. Yeah. Okay. Just cutting the losses straight off. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, yeah. And if they're not dead, well, we've just got food now, guys. Right. smoke to the milk. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't just make a, a campfire. Yeah. Like, just make one. Um, obviously... That is, yeah, it's pretty damn lit. As, as she's wafting it, I'm just going to stand at the entrance with uh, my sword and shield ready to kill anything that runs out. So, Kitty, make sure you mark off in your pack, uh, mark off one use of your, your adventuring gear and just write, um, like, campfire kit or something in your notes. Alright, so. Okay, okay. Perfect. Because that's what you've got, and that doesn't just disappear now. That's something you've got. You've got a campfire kit. Yep. Um. So basically, like a flint and tinder, really is, isn't it? So. Yeah. Cool. To start fires. Right. So. At least somebody brought that. You light the fire. What are you using to waft stuff in? Is it a cloak or something they could use to like? Yeah, so I take off the cloak that I had mm -hmm. on, and just flap it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is <laughs> I like I just an... did the hand motion. You can't even see me. I did the hand motion for it. It's okay, I did as well. It's, um, <laughs> so you're in. The, I'm actually like holding both hands out as if I'm holding a cloak. Yep, um, it's perfect. <laughs> good. It's good TV. Um, so you're, you've built this just in the kind of mouth of the cave because otherwise the smoke would just go up and out, and then you start like mm -hmm. rafting this down into the the cave. Um, yeah, how long do you do that for? It's probably going to take a bit because we don't know how big the cave is. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But also, it would probably naturally suck the smoke in. Oh, that's exactly. I mean, that's how caves work. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it it wouldn't take ages, but I'd say maybe maybe about half an hour. Okay. So just for about thirty minutes. Um, can I discern realities? You can every about second. Me. Uh what I'm gonna say is the light from the campfire obviously that you set up in this in the essentially cave. It lights up the inside of the cave a little, and um, but you can see that the the darkness kinda creeps on in even further. So it's almost like it leads to like a tunnel um that you can't quite see down. So maybe the tunnel twists and bends, maybe. You yeah. don't know. Um but obviously you're wafting smoke in so it gets a bit harder and harder to see. Um yeah, what was it you wanted to discern realities about? What is about to happen? Well, first I've got to roll on it. Yeah, I was going to say, so, like, talk to me first, though. So you want to discern realities about what? Uh, I want to understand if, so like, I could hear 
uh, anything moving around in the cave. Obviously, it could be quite deep, so I might, might not be able to hear anything, but if I can hear anything approaching. approaching um, yeah, so you want to kind of listen, anything, right? Yeah. Anything that I should be looking out for. Obviously, I know I need to be looking out for goblins, but do I know where else resides in caves? Yeah, that makes and sense, yeah. Whether anything that the goblins will have will be any of use to me. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, yeah, roll discern realities, right? We'll see how well you do. This is while she's wafting away. <laughs> waft, waft. Waft away. Okay, seven. All right. So on the seven, eight, or nine, you ask one. Okay, and okay. you get to take a plus one forward when acting on the answers. So remember that if this, if like whatever you ask comes up, you get a plus one on it. So what is about to happen? That's your question. Right. Let's see. Uh, as you obviously like start to like study there, you're poised there. You've got your shield and your sword ready. Smoke's getting wafted in, wafted in. You start to see less and less. Maybe you start to listen, and you hear bleating very faintly in the distance, coming from the like the tunnels in the cave. Okay, bleating as in the sheep, yeah. and you start to hear footsteps getting louder and louder and louder. What is about to happen? People are about to come out of the cave. People? I say that loosely. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, that's what he hears. I tense up and go, enemies, they are coming. Okay. Uh, does Sibylla or Ketty do anything in response to Cavill? I stop wafting and pull out the sword. Cool. You're now king of all of England. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't you stand to the side, don't sorry. So yeah. Perfect, right, cool. So, like, kind of taking cover kind of behind the cave mouth? Yeah. For Sibylla, I mean, sorry. You're in the cave, oh, yeah, yeah. having just wafted. Um, cool. I could retreat back a bit. I mean, you could, yeah. But then, it's the point, right? Because a whole bunch of goblins just pounce out, right? Because of course they do, and they're all coughing and spluttering and, you know, like, very shocked that you're there, quite frankly. Um, and, yeah. So, goblins burst out. There is, I mean, several of them that you can see just now, maybe four at the moment, but you don't know if that's the end of them or if there's going to be more of them because you filled the cave full of smoke so they burst out they didn't expect to see three people standing with a campfire in their cave full of smoke I don't wait I just attack through a yep. hack and slash okay let's go for it from Cavill first then hack and slash away cool a very nice roll so here is the question you get an 11 are you going to do extra damage and expose yourself to their attack or are you going to just do your damage successfully and not expose yourself to their attack? Oh, I'll do extra damage. I don't mind. I was going to say, well, I think your sword wants you to, right? Yeah. <laughs> so your sword's like, do it. Do it now. <laughs> Take the heads. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> so yeah, this poor little goblin runs out, coughing, rubbing its red eyes, looks up and then just hears the of the swing of the sword and then there's just he that the shot of a uh, his eyes going wide and then the cave wall with his shadow from the fire and then just a spurt of blood <laughs> wow okay like no extra damage at all Fatality. cool so you do a uh, what is your damage dice on your character a d10 right so oh, i need to roll click, on, you, click on damage as well it's on your character sheet yep so you rolled a 9 plus 1 from the sword, and also that, so your total is 11, then? Big mighty hit. Yeah, I mean, you just absolutely annihilate this little goblin. Um, I am Goblin Slayer. Right, one dead instantaneously, gone, just, just gone. 
Um, right, let me make sure I've got my notes right here for this. As that happens, um, you're doing more damage, so can you roll a d6 again for me? Um, his little buddy just like runs up and just uh, stabs you with his little spear for four damage. <laughs> right, so do you have armor? That's the next question. I, I do. Cool. Click on the main uh -huh. part, because if it's all equipped it should it should all be done, so click on main. What's your armor score? It's a two. There you go. So you only take two damage from that. Okay. There you go. So this little goblin, like you've absolutely annihilated one and in the swing this little one has just come up and stabbed you a bit. You pull your shield down to kinda of block it. It isn't happy. So I uh, Kitty, you said you were out into attack as well? Yep. So you just yeah, see, so. like, Cavill swinging and absolutely, like, decapitate one. And yeah. one, then get stabbed in the side by another yeah. goblin. So, yeah. Do you go for that one or do you go for the other two that are kicking about just now? Uh, I'm going to go for the one that stabbed him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Go yeah. for it. I can slash. Um, Short sword. Boom. But also, with the help of my... My companion. Right, so you're using command instead. Yes. Right, so let's learn how all that works. So, let's bring that up. So, let me see. These probably count as monsters because it's the way of the world, isn't it? Right? Um, doesn't matter, you've got monsters in that anyway, so I don't think it matters. I don't need to think about that. That's the one you took. Command. Right, so what is it you're commanding it to do? Uh, to attack the same target. Cool. So, how does that look? So, I just point my sword at the one that I want to attack. Just shout attack, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's nothing fancy. Yeah. It's just... Probably say it in Elvish, though. Not that I know what that is. But, because us folk who all speak common, <laughs> I'm just going to translate it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a noise your wolf knows. To attack with. Yeah. So yeah. It's like you shout like Angalohain or some shit from Lord of the Rings yeah. and then you the wolf leaps in as well. So you and your wolf leap in, hack and slash, and you get to add to the damage if it works. So what do I press? Do I press hack command and, and then hack and slash or just hack and slash? Uh, you can put command in just so we get used to it being a thing, right? And then we know you're taking the top option. Yeah. So you get an eight, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you get to do your damage. So click on your damage, which is underneath your health or above your health or something, right? Yeah. Cool. So you do six damage to the little thing, I, but it's an eight. And the ferocity is a three for my. Yep. But complete the hack and slash. So you get an attack against you. So I need you to roll a d6, please. you take six damage as well Aye. in this attack. So, what's your armor? One. Cool. So, the lucky thing is it wasn't your, your doggo. Mm. <laughs> First battle, attack, dead. Okay, <laughs> rethink this. So, what happens is you go in, your wolf jumps in, and maybe it's the fact that your wolf's kind of savage that gives it away um, mm. as it leaps in, because it's not, like, it, it's there, it's scary, big fire, shadows, yeah. wolf, rar. Comes out of the smoke or comes into the smoke. This little thing that's just stabbed Cavill in the side just does that thing where it turns and mouths holy fuck and then <laughs> moves the spear. Um, like The wolf jumps on it, it pushes the wolf off, leans up, stabs you, like in the kind of the gut or something, or like in the chest as you lean in to like stab into him and like as you stab into him the wolf like turns around and like bites its head off. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> uh, make sure you use a mark on your health as well for your damages um, but that's two dead <coughs> cool um, Sibylla, you doing anything? Or are you still hanging back out of the way? I have so you've just noticed seen... that they were attacking yeah so they've killed goblins quite overtly um, yeah. And like the wolves, like mauled one as well. But they've also both just been yeah. stabbed, as well with these little spears. Yeah. So, 
I've, I've, I've given up on the idea that, you know, maybe we can all be friends. Um, <laughs> Not necessarily because, you know, maybe I couldn't have convinced them to be friends, well, because, you know, my friends kind of ruined it before we had the chance, but yeah. oh well. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will also join back with my, uh, daggers, so I will also be joining in. I'm not really sure how this works, though. Well, what do you want to do? What is it you would like to, how would you like to join? Do you want to cast a spell at them? Do you want to... No, no, just, like, with my daggers. Them? Yeah, so... <laughs> Go up. Um, so there's two goblins that aren't dead that you can just see out of the smoke. Yeah. You go up to one of them and just do yeah. hack and slash. Cool. So you swing at them. Oh. Um, I need you to roll your damage, which is Ooh. underneath the uh, the health. So underneath my health. Yeah. Should have damage listed. D4. Yeah. Click that. It should have to drop down for me. Nope, you don't click the D4, you click the button. Oh, okay. Right. It's okay. Now I need you to roll a D6, because you rolled a 9 on your hack and slash, so they attack you as well. So roll a D6 for me, just from the, okay. the dice roller bit at the left hand side. Okay. Cool. Do you have armor? Yes. Cool. So you woke up. Uh, you go to stab them with your dagger and then they go to like hit you with their spear so they pull out their spear and your dagger and their spear clang off each other and that's the interaction because none of you take damage fair enough so I think it's, it's it makes more sense that you clash off each other um, yeah and the little goblin just looks at you with his eyes going wide um, it like screams something in goblin um, does anybody speak goblin here? No. No. I don't, but I'll be screaming, I'll be like imitating the noise like, and screaming back. So you you just make the noise that it makes, yeah? So you. Because Kim and can tell me if you have a reason to speak goblin, right? That's world building. No. No, 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 but just the idea, like if it goes like. Rawr! Oh, sorry, cat invading my room, sorry. No, it Maybe clearly, no, it definitely um, shouts something yeah, in goes goblin. Rawr, I'll be like. Rawr! As well, you know? No, it's, it's definitely in like intelligent noises it's saying in the sense of it's language it's speaking but I want to know do any of you speak goblin yes or no yep. nope cool it's fine so you don't understand what it says but it like screams something at uh, Sibylla as it blocks and it turns its head and shouts to the other one something else in goblin and then it pulls out a little horn and blows its little horn and yeah you hear the rumbling of uh, feet again through the cave. Calling for reinforcements! You do speak goblin! <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so. What now? There's these two goblins locked in battle with your mage. And you are covered in dead goblin. Used to. I, I turn to Kitty and go, more come in. More are uh, coming, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my intelligence here. <laughs> and. <laughs> And then charge and hack and slash her. Oh, you're right. Um, minus one, it's fine. One of the other goblins. Cool, so the one that blew the horn, the one in fighting with Sibylla. The one that blew the horn. Cool. Uh, yeah, so you step over past the fire. This is like at the back of the cave now, or like the, the cave you can see through the smoke. Yeah. And go over. Yep, hack and slash. Cool. So you woke up, swing at him, uh, do your damage. Dear gods. And, uh, I'm a monster! Yeah. And. Yeah, let me see. See if you click your weapon, does it do the roll as well? No. No, you should probably program it so it does. Because that. What, that just uh, hack and slash, more or less? No, don't adjust hack and slash, just adjust life drinker as a move um, so it does it for you, because it makes more sense if you do. Okay, so what's what is it? It's uh, strength for all right, and uh, then plus one because of my weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not plus one to the roll, though. It's only plus one to damage. Oh, okay. So how, where would I pop that into? It should be there. Oops. So we'll look at that just now because it's probably worth having in here. Yeah. So there's roll. I've put the drop down strength. It goes plus. So I imagine to put one there. Nope, you don't. Because okay. that's that's the roll to attack. And then oh, would I put the, it as the damage is already factored in from your equipment. Oh, okay, fair that's enough. Fine. so that's fine. 
Yeah, so I would use that instead because it, it reminds me. Um, also, you probably want to delete things like, um, like the text you don't want in there, but that's fine. I just I think it makes more sense that you click the move you have. So we'll keep the first row you made, but do you want to click it again just to make sure it actually does work? Yeah. Cool. That's a better. I think that's much better. Because um, yeah. it lets me know that it's got huge and messy and forceful because that's why I'm describing things like the head f flying off and the blood splatter on the wall. <laughs> Trigger, when you create a character, let me change that. Yeah, um, I would just put in when you hack and slash. That's probably better for that. Okay, cool. So you got a 9 anyway. Um, so you rolled 9 damage and I need you to roll a d6 against yourself as well because this little guy yep cool so you take one damage I believe total yep. out of that cool one damage so yeah there's like hits off your shield maybe nicks you in the thigh as you pull your shield up because he does a cool little kind of dual wielding snap snap move with his spear and then next your your thigh and then you just again hit him with this sword and do you want to describe how messy and disgusting it is because he's dead he's gone the blade just connects for his with his throat and his throat's not as thick as the blade so his head just spins off and blood squares everyone disgusting so yeah th this like <laughs> behind the goblin that's in front of you uh, sibylla there's just a blood splatter on the, the cave wall um, so this is how the early cave paintings of the Goblin tribe were made. <laughs> um, so that's, is it three dead so far? Yep. <laughs> um, right, anyone else? Because you've still got a Goblin in front of you, Sibylla. Um, you know there's Goblins coming up the like from like further in the Smoky Cave. Um, what do you do? What's the plan? Well, I once again hack and stuff. Yeah, go for it. So yeah, do your damage. And then roll a d6. Cool. So you've got one armor, don't you? So take one damage. Mm -hmm. So the first box of health, mark one off. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, and you like stab into him as well so as he like moves his spear away from your dagger to hit you um, mm -hmm. you take your opportunity and stab him with your dagger and yeah you kill him <laughs> yep turns out his armor was crap so you just like your dagger just like actually just goes straight through it <laughs> melee mage anyone <laughs> um, yeah so there's four dead goblins now in the mouth of this cave and the sound of more coming up the cave kind of tunnel What's the plan, guys? Uh, I take more battle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can you can wait for them to come to you. You could run into the tunnels and go for them. It's up to you. Nah, I wait for them to come out. Yeah, I lift my shield up, put my sword in a like an offensive position, and just wait. Cool. You doing anything specific or just posturing? Just cool. Because I mean, there is a move called defend. <laughs> uh, when you stand in position, uh, stand up as I talk, okay, shit. So for everybody else, okay, uh, when I you stand in defense of a person, item, or location under attack, roll plus your constitution, uh, or plus con, I should say, on a 10 plus hold 3, on a 7, 8, or 9, hold 1, so long as you stand in defense, when you are the thing you defended attacked, you may spend one hold for one of the following options. Half the attack's effect or damage, open up the attacker to an ally, giving that ally a plus 1 forward against the attacker, uh, deal damage to the attacker equal to your level. I will use defend then. Uh, oh, so your plus one forward would have already happened on that first move. It didn't matter because you got an 11 anyway. Yeah. So it would have been a 12 and there's no extra move for 12. So. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about the plus one it's forward. Okay. Okay. Plus one forward, 
means it's the next thing that happens. Plus one on going is constant, right? Okay. Uh, so I will stand in defense of Kitty. Cool. Perfect. As per my bond with her. Excellent. Do you want to roll to defend? Nope. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will put that one XP on, though. Yep, mark an XP. Yep. I am um, wonderful, wonderful XP. Dear gods, how do you fuck that up? <laughs> it's offensive, not defensive. He learned his aggressive ways from the yeah. chivalrous order. <laughs> Eight months of protecting you has led to this game. Eight <laughs> months of it. <laughs> well, I don't need to protect her if I kill everything. That's true, the best defense is just an absolutely bloody messy offense. Um, right, so you've marked your XP, that is good. Um, cool. I will let you know what happens, but you're standing in defense of Kitty. I'm just looking at her with my sword and shield like I'm going to attack, like I defend. And then, yeah, so Kitty, I'm assuming you're used to this by now, him obviously doing the defensive position and then you maybe yeah. ready at the side and obviously we've got our, our mage at the other side of the cave. Uh, Sibylla, what are you doing? Are you waiting with your dagger at the kind of mouth of the tunnel as well with them? Or are you behind oh, them? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be going in front of them in any way. Probably behind them, if anything. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, right, so <laughs> what we get in this situation then for that wonderful five that you rolled is there is a spear that comes flying out, right, of the air. Uh, the darkness essentially um, and you pull up your spear uh, so your shield to block it because it's like thrown it obviously human head height right so you go to like block it and as you pull it up to block just this stream of goblins rush you underneath so they go under your shield and uh, I need you to roll yeah right I need you to roll uh, a d6 twice there we go. Cool. So you take five damage and then four damage, right? Minus two off those. Yeah, because your armor still counts, except your shield doesn't. Oh, my shield doesn't. Right. Okay. So it's only just the one then. The shield gives me one armor. Yeah. So I take three plus four seven. Oof. That was a painful. No, those are two separate attacks. You did that wrong. Okay. So the first one. Is what four? Yeah. No, you did it right. Sorry, uh, you did you did it right. I just can't count. I thought <laughs> I thought you'd done it differently for some stupid reason. I was still thinking your armor was two, but your armor's one, isn't it? No, without yes. your shield. Because the shield didn't uh, apply yeah. for that. Then I'm wrong, and you're right. That's fine. Cool. Seven damage it is total. Cool. So that's probably like what's your how much of your health was that gone? Like a third or something? I have twenty five, so it's a good chunk. Yeah. So. <laughs> These two goblins, obviously, they, they maybe got on, caught on to the fact that they've maybe fought things bigger than them before, right? Um, and you've been caught off guard, so yeah, they just swarm you at this point. Um, what do you do? He's just been stabbed by goblins pretty badly. Well, I I'm going to help. Hack and slash as well. Cool. So yeah. jump into the free. Yep. Yep. Oh no. Uh. <laughs> Mark a point of experience. <laughs> XP, boys! So, <laughs> top corner, next to your level. Yeah. Pop in a point of XP. Roll a d6, because it didn't go well. No. Cool. I think you only take one from that, because I think your armor's one, isn't it? Yeah. So, cool, yep. So, you go to help, and you then realize like as you go further in you, the smoke clears a bit more as it starts to thin yeah. out because you're not, you've not been wafting for a while you see uh, <laughs> and you just see that there's more that you didn't expect so as you lean in there's a spear coming to meet you and then obviously you try and block it as best you can hence why you want yeah. to take the two as uh, you take one damage of them sorry not two uh, right so you now see that there's way more coming out of this tunnel than you thought uh, right Keep in mind, there's no specific order to this, so it's just what you just want to do. Um, so, yeah, so Billy, you're bas basically seeing him being swarmed by goblins and uh, Kitty trying to like help and be stabbed by a spear. And I'll be like, no! 
I love the idea that you're right behind them, so it's right in Cavill's ear. Oh. Wow. Um, so, they've all been attacked, but the things that attack them, can can I see them? Or is it just yeah, spears that it's came just, out of it, them? It's just a whole bunch of goblins coming out of this kind of tunnel. That, cause keep in mind, the cave mouth is a bit like an open cave like where you'd find a sleeping bear. And then further into yeah. it, it's dark, and there's a big tunnel windy bit you can't really see down. And they've all come from this. And they were more than okay. expected. So, what I'm going to do, because, you know, I'm uh, um, quite used to Cavill being the bodyguard. Mm. I just freaked out that he's, like, being made into, like, pink cushions. Mm. I would like to cure him. Cool. Yep. He's so. right behind, right in front of me, so yeah. I can totally like reach out to his shoulder and be like, "So you're gonna cast better. cast a spell?" I will cast cure light wounds, or try to. But do I just press on it? Or? So you click cast a spell first. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes. So we've established what spell you wanted to cast, which is cure light wounds, and you'll click cast. Cool. It's a very good roll. Ooh la la! <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now you want to click on the spell, and it should roll it. Ah, okay, okay. There we go. So you heal for one. Oh god. <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> Better than nothing. Literally the least no. I could have no. given you. So, how does it look? Describe how your spellcasting looks. What did, like, what did the audience see? So, Cavill, would you say that you're like... Actually, no, you're right in front of me. It doesn't matter if you're tall if you, or not. I can reach you If you want a picture, <laughs> go to the filler arc log and there's no. a picture of my no, character. No, no, no. I, I, I thought, like, you know, because I would struggle to, to, like, you know, reach you, but then I was like, it doesn't have to be necessarily a shoulder. I could, like, reach, like, you know, his middle and be like, be well! <laughs> um, but, um... I mean, he's got a lot of cuts yeah, on him. You could so, probably reach any of them, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably want to touch him in the back yeah. though, because goblins are kind of climbing him. Yeah, yeah. So I, let's let's put it that I kind of failed because I was kind of like kind of wanted to keep my distance, but also like get close enough to touch him, and he's mm -hmm. like surrounded by goblins, and I don't want them to climb all over me. So I'm like, you know, kind of like very, very, very gently, like more or less stretching my like entire yeah. arm and my fingers to like touch him with the tip of one finger and be like, be better. Yeah, like as soon as you make contact, you pull your hand away. Half of the healing is lost to the air. Yeah, I like it. What's the visuals of that though? Like, do we get like, is there like white light? Is it elven leaves? Is there butterflies? Is there I don't know. Like you, you tell me. Like, how do, how does the spell look? Or is it nothing? Um, do we see nothing? And it just for, for for a second, the tip of my finger would have gl uh, glowed this like like golden light. Okay. Yeah. Like like a like um. Uh, like a firefly. Mm -hmm. Like the tip okay. of my finger was a firefly. Cool. I like it. So you, you can heal one. I hope you already did so, Cavill. Yes. Good. Um, at that as well, one of the goblins from like behind the, the ones piling on top of Cavill shout something in goblin um, and then like climb over and crowd surf the others back. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, they're heading back. Oh, God. Only one of them. I, Hear me! I see that one. I just bolt through the goblins trying to attack him and hack and slash. No, I need you to defy no. danger. And I need you to defy danger with how you describe that. So I think you're just uh, powering through or enduring. You tell me. I would say, look, I am enduring an attack, but what I want to do is to power through the no, group, fine. group of goblins through. to Def attack. That one. Defy the injury to power through. This is to see how many kill you. <laughs> As you just, like, boulder your way through them. Okay. So. What do we have? Right. Perfect. So, on the 7, 8, or 9, you stumble, hesitate, or flinch. The GM will offer you a worse outcome, hard bargain, or an ugly choice. Right? So. You can make it through, but you need to throw the goblins that are on you, left or right. Okay. So you need to get the one that's climbing on you, that's like pretty much trying to stab you in the chest, that's behind your shield and your shield arms in front of them. So you need to 
grab him, like with your sword hand, like and just like your sword hand and shield hand, and then you have to tip him left or right. I will. Ooh. Do <laughs> I know where my companions are behind left me? Left and right. <laughs> it would be on my left, and it would be on my right. So on your left is again not Trelawney, Sibylla, and on your right is a uh, Kitty. Okay, so so the one you're sworn to protect, or the one that healed you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's why it's called a was it a worst outcome, hard bargain, or ugly choice? Yep. Left. I will buddy. throw it to the left. Oh God. Although, although she is healing me, I I must still have my must still fulfill my bond of and my my oath to protect Kitty. Yeah, sure, makes perfect sense. Um. Right, I want you to roll the damage. I want you to roll a d6, and this is what happens to Sibylla. Sibylla, you will take three damage minus whatever armor you have. One. Yep, because he just threw a goblin at you. <laughs> <laughs> However, ironically, your justification has then in fact led to you abandoning your sworn charge, right? So and you've, okay. You, so you've just like picked the goblin, thrown it to the left. It's hit uh, Sibylla, stabbed her as it's landed on her. Um, so you have a goblin in your face now, and <laughs> he's just powering through, like smacking through this horde of goblins um, I am a, into the, the dark um, tunnel. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the justification for doing this is the goblin. That goblin who's running away might be called. Uh, he crowd surfed away. I'll have you know. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So the way he grabs her, the way, he could be getting more reinforcements or something more deadly. If I power on through these goblins, they they will go, holy shit, this guy's, we need to kill him quick. So they'll, they should focus on me, the guy that's just like pushing him aside, like, sup. <laughs> Hunting after probably the guy that said he's off to go get more friends. Mm. So you run off into the darkness. Um, right, so you kind of start smacking into walls and stuff and you can uh, start to get a feel for it your eyes slowly start to adjust um, very little in the way of light tiny bit behind you uh, and you head forward we'll come back to you in a second Kitty, your defenders are just ran through a goblin at your healer and just ran <laughs> through a pile of goblins that have all just been like, batted to the side like baby Yoda's discarded at a shopping mall <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna keep hacking and slashing at what's in front of me Really? Cool. Do so, please. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, That's perhaps. No. Mark XP. <laughs> it's nice, though, isn't it? Because you don't feel bad about failing as much. No. Uh, but also, please uh, roll damage against you. It's a d6. Oh, yeah. I was trying to remember which one it was. Oh, oh no. come on. So, maybe you're like, why is he running away? Stab, stab. <laughs> Yeah, I got distracted. <laughs> God damn it! Yep, it's also like not the, the best when a bunch of zom like zombies, goblins even. God damn zombies! Um, come at you, let's be. So, I uh, also Sibylla, you have like a a goblin on you as well. What do you do? I'd be like, where'd you come from? And try to you know. It cocks its head when you it say that, and it just starts babbling and goblin. Well, yeah. But, but I'd be like, you know, trying to like, cut it off. <laughs> kind of like, get off me! Cool. Um. Okay, okay. Uh, yep, roll your damage, and then, cool. And then roll its damage against you, perfect. Bloody hell. Yep. So it just clatters off its armor as, like, it was mid like babble like blah 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 in goblin. And then And I'll take it my four damage. And you go to stab and then it like clinks off its armor and it looks down and then looks angry at you and then with its spear two handed over its head just brings its spear down on you. And then you you kinda throw it to the side. Um in this. Ow. Um Yeah. So you used to her left in the mouth of the cave with a bunch of goblins scattered around you now. Um, these are kind of slowly getting surrounded by like uh, these crazy little green guys with bright red eyes. Uh, meanwhile, 
further in the cave. Careful. You run forward. Uh, you finally start to kind of get the dimensions of the cave in that weird ESP-like way that people have with their senses, and you get uh, into it like what's like a, almost like I'm um, lit by like kind of the weird fungus on the walls. Um, so it starts to like get brighter, and you head in, and there's like a big open kind of like cavernous area, um, and you go in there, and you see what looks like that little goblin that's obviously scampered all the way in here. Its spear is kind of lying between you and it at the moment, and it's like on its knees. It's like ran and crawled so fast it's kind of on its knees, and it's speaking in goblin to what looks like an older goblin with um. It looks like a burlap sack's been turned into a fancy robe that it's wearing, right? And it also looks like it's got a collar full of, like, wool. Like a big fancy woolen collar. Did they shear the sheep? Or did they kill them and shear them? Don't know. Um, you don't see any sheep. But it is, it is protecting something in, like, look at a, the back of the room. And so it's quite a big room, big cave, um, very like you can't really see too well. You can only kind of see like them because they're in like the kind of fungal area that's lit as well. And um, so like where you are is lit, where they are is lit. The kind of sides are all kind of dark. Okay, uh, I'm assuming that is the chieftain of the goblins, and I am going to run and attack it with hack and slash. No questions asked. Enemy in front of me must die. Do you pull it forward? Um, oof, you do. Are you gonna go all in? Of course. In fact, 10 plus. Yeah, when you add that text in, actually, as well, when you have all those like results, see the, the hack and slash results. So we know you can do more. So are you gonna do more? Oh, I didn't add all of it in. It's okay, we'll fix it. Uh, yes, I will. Let me just add that into so I don't forget. Perfect. And then roll a d6 because it's an extra d6 that you're doing. Cool. So you do 13 total, yeah? No, no, it's just by roll, wasn't it? I had to actually roll the damage. Oh, yeah, so you did. So And I just crit it, it's fine. Dear God. So 14 total, sorry. Yep. Against what you think is their chieftain. And. Yeah, so 14 total. Uh, I need you to roll a d10 plus 1. A d10 plus 1? Yup. Oh my god. Yes, 11! <laughs> Thank you. So, you take a second, you rush through the end of the cave, you see the spear in the middle of the ground, you see this thing crawling towards what you think is the chieftain. The chieftain, like, hand on this box. Uh, looks at you, looks at him, and then you just bolt for him. As you do that, he starts saying something you can't understand. It doesn't sound like goblin, it sounds kind of stranger. Um, and then all this green energy circles around his hand, and it fires this like orb at you. And um, this orb comes flying towards you, you pull your shield up. It does all of that damage, and it ignores armor. So it does 11 damage to you, with no reduction. Ooh. So... This guy just throws a wall of acid at you. You can hear it stinging on your shield, you can hear it sizzling on your armour, your sword is screaming at you now for yeah. your failure. Um, and you swing down and just, I guess, like, cut this guy in half. Yeah, just in, in fury. It's like, <laughs> as, like, you're cutting the guy in half, like, as you get closer and you're, like, you come out of this mist of green haze, like, the mist of green haze, that'll do. Haze of green mist, that's better. Um, like, burning and sizzling away. Um, he turns to the other one uh, and he speaks, like, really broken common. Um, and he says, just before you, like, absolutely got him in half, he's like, don't harm the child. And then, <laughs> it splits into blood splatter everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> How bad do you look now, by the way? Is that not um, well, my character, while he does feel pain and it does hurt him, he always, he always just like seems to make it look like he's not as bad as he should be. For so he, he, is just ridiculous, he, though. 
so much damage. What the fuck? Um, he. Um, oh, you never obviously took the... with this acid. Hit him. No, it's okay. He did. It's okay. Forget me. I'm adding d sixes where they shouldn't be. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's uh, there's just like parts of his skin that are just sizzling away, and he just turned to look at this goblin. Yeah, he looks. He's got. He's like kind of glow, uh, glowing a bit green. I imagine because the acid still burning yeah, away. Yeah, it's like just slowly like stinging at him and whatnot. Yeah, like to be honest, your shield is probably useless. To be honest, considering that damage critted, right? It's probably yeah, absolutely useless. So, uh, I want you to. Would you break my shield? I would like you to unequip that at least. Yeah, it might still be repairable, but I would like it unequipped for the purposes of whether it can provide yep. your armor or not. Um, yeah, that's fine. Because, yeah, that was a ridiculously good roll for him. Uh, oh, I but yeah. hope the goblin is very scared looking at me. So, as you've done that, like this, the, the chieftain, as you again, as you assume, is like mostly in two parts now. Um, and you turn round, and the, the other goblin that ran here is like clambering over this box, like between you. Like the chieftain stepped forward to cast his spell, you annihilated him. So now there's this goblin with its kind of back kind of turned to you, as it's kind of like trying to like use its body to cover this box. And it's turned to you, and it's kind of got like its hands up and its big red eyes, really huge. What do you do? I drink a potion. <laughs> so you just stop <laughs> and drink. Yeah, I just I look at look at the goblin, stab my sword. Uh, well, actually, now I've got a spare hand because my shield's on there. Mm -hmm. Open up a potion, pop its top up. Cool. As soon as you do that, the thing runs at you. Defy danger with dexterity. Uh, can I add my hit points first? Nope. Nope, okay. Uh. Cool. So this happens just as you're uh, doing that. So you've got two options, right? You can finish drinking the potion to get the hit points, or you can grab your like you can swing your sword. So I can drink my potion or swing my sword. Yep. So you've got time to I, like react I, in I one way. I drink my potion. Jesus <laughs> Christ! I'm drinking my potion. Cool. So you finish drinking your potion, and then after you drink your potion, I want you to then uh, take damage from this thing. Cool. So you can recover. I'm assuming ten damage. And then, yeah. So the thing just like hits, at, like it's it's got no weapons anyway, right? So it's just kind of hitting at you. Um, <laughs> I'm just drinking its potion. And then you've drank potion. It's ran at you. It's beating on you. Um, like kind of helplessly with its fists. Kind of probably like your your stomach or something. Um, your shield's probably tossed to the side as you toss that down, pull out your potion. Um, it, yeah, it just looks like it's crying. <coughs> I'm going to hack and slash and kill it. Cool. Um, as you go to do that, I think by this point, Kitty and... Uh, the reason I was going to say Arya is because you're called Kitty. Kitty and Sibylla. Um, <laughs> cool. While that's going on, um, what do you do? You've got a couple of goblins in front of you. One's like being tossed to the side. Slashing. Cool. Do you want to give it a go? Try and see if you can kill the ones in front of you? Oh, nope. wow. You're going to level up so quickly. Um, <laughs> maybe you need to use your animal to help you hit things. I don't know if you can, but maybe we need to try. Um, did you mark XP? I did, yeah. Cool. Take your damage. D6. Oh, yeah. Then take another your shit. Um, in fact, add that HP back, right? So don't don't take that damage, right? Uh, they just steal your sword and run away behind the cave with it. That's what they do. They just literally take it and go. They bolt. They seem happy about it. Like Jawa noise happy. And then, uh, cool. Is there one still in front of me or have they all Yeah, so gone? remember you threw one to the side. So they've all ran down the cave now um, with her sword. Mm -hmm. um, your wolf's like, the fuck? And then uh, you turn, there's one goblin kind of behind Kitty and obviously to the side of... Uh, Sibylla. What do you do, Sibylla? I will cast a spell at it. Oh, what spell? Magic missile. Okay. Right. So, how does your magic missile look? What's the... Like, is it like bolts of light? Is it like 
Yeah, it would be like bolts arrows. of light, like a tiny little bit of lightning, mm -hmm. essentially. Cool. cool. So it's a lot like... of kind of lightning bolts that you throw out. Um, yeah. What are you picking? Are you picking draw and welcome detention? Are you picking minus one ongoing? Or are you picking uh, forgetting the spell? I'm going to draw and welcome attention towards me. Cool. So as Somehow. you cast this, um, there's like thunder crack of the lightning from the, the spell. And yeah, do your damage. Let's click on magic missile. This poor wee goblin. Oofed. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just gone. Like, you, you just kill it. Just instantly. It looks up. It's got his little you spear. See the on my face? Looks at you. His eyes go wide. We see the crackle of lightning in its eyes as it zooms in on it, and then poof. Gone. I um, feel bad. So, used to her now. But it was on my face. User in the mouth of the cave. There are no goblins anymore in the cave. They've run back down the tunnel. What do you do? Well, I pull my. Uh bow out, that's for sure. Cool. So you pull your bow out. Do you head into the tunnel or wait there? Because now they're going to chase after, obviously, Cavill. Yeah, I'm going to chase after them. Okay, cool. Um, as you do that, so do you follow Sibylla or do you just stay in the mouth of the cave? What? What? Sibylla, this is. Oh. So Sibylla, are you following, or are you staying in the mouth of the cave? I am, sorry, I was pressing on the wrong button. I don't know why, hmm. I mean, I've, I've always had this control button, and for some reason I kept pressing on the button next to it, and then complaining to myself, why isn't this one? okay, just need to know um, if you're following, yeah, or staying. Yeah, uh, I'll definitely be going with, with everybody, yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Yep, so like you're following. Second, so, I, I killed that one, I follow everybody, but I do feel a bit bad about having killed him, and I'm like a bit, I don't know. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Flit. Um, right, so, okay, you run down this corridor, um, you're following these goblins, um, and you'll get to the part where they run into the room that Cavill's in, and then you'll be at the mouth of that room. Uh, I need Sibylla to take damage as she runs into the cave, so I need a d6. Aww. I know. Cool. So I think you only take two. Does my thing work? My one armor. Yeah, it does. Because a goblin from the kind of roof of the cave tunnel that you're in drops on you as you're running, and it hung back because it was hiding. You, you killed its buddy, and it just jumps down and starts attacking you. Um, so you're still in this tunnel fighting this thing. Um, it's almost like you'd run wanted attention, and then yeah, so we're in. The mouth of the cave, so Kitty, you can hear behind you, Sibylla's fighting back up the cave tunnel. You know there's at least two goblins that have run into this cave uh, after a, uh, what do you call them? Cavill, and they have your sword. And you can see Cavill literally about to kill a crying uh, goblin. It's kind of like just hitting with its hands <laughs> helplessly against his chest. <laughs> What do you do? Well, I'm going to attack the two that ran off. So the two that are kind of between you and him, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Going for the one with your sword or the one without? The one with my sword. Cool. Well, they're both kind of carrying it between them, but it doesn't matter. One of them's got the, yeah. the hilt of it, so... <laughs> okay, yep, go for it. Give me a volley. Nope, it's a volley. What? Oh, sorry. You're using your bow. Yeah, I forgot. It's okay. Nice. Yes. Much better shot. Uh, yeah, do your damage. Yep. And you just kill him. Arrow, back of the neck. Falls. Yeah. Well, I'm just like, the other one that was holding the blade kind of like drops the blade. Um, as he was like, he's kind of fell onto like the hilt, as it were. And he like yeah. just goes over to it and puts his hands on its back and just starts crying. Uh, Right, so I think with that, Cavill, you turn round, um, just like as you've pulled your sword up to swing at this one at you, as your sword's held aloft. Um, obviously, it's saying, Yes. <laughs> and you turn round and you hear this <laughs> thud, and we're crying. And you turn round and you see the one dead goblin, one uh, 
was crying over its body. And then in the, in the distance where the, the fungus is lighting up the entrance to this room, you can see K. Did you complete your hack and slash? Yes. Okay. Monster. <laughs> <laughs> the only good goblin is a dead goblin. Cool. They are an enemy. They must be vanquished. Roll, roll your damage, you monster. <laughs> Christ. Okay, so seven damage. Uh, and I need you to take damage as well. Cool. I think you take one, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, I think as you swing at it, it like leans down and tries to grab the sword, obviously, from underneath the crying goblin. It swings up. Kind of like, it's too big for it, so it kind of cuts your leg a bit. Um, and then it just is met with your sword going straight through it in a bloody mess. And there's now multiple parts of this goblin. Yeah. So now, you two are in a room with one goblin crying over its dead body. Uh -huh. And a box that was apparently worth protecting. And then, back in the tunnel, Sibylla. <laughs> You're fighting in the dark with a goblin. What do you do? I will once again try to hit the thing. Cool. With my daggers. Cool. Cool. Even with a minus one, because you're in the dark, this would be fine. So yep, you do your damage, Yay! and also take damage from it. That's yours, and then nice done. And you take damage as well. Cool. So you take two of that, and then yeah, you kill this thing in the dark, you th thud to the bottom. The weight of its dagger, blah blah blah. So yeah, do you stumble towards your buddies? I'll take it. Yeah, and as I stumble towards them, I'll probably try to heal myself. Yeah, just to go for it. That's gonna be... Oh, I can do that now? Yeah. Okay. So I'd be spelling. Mm -hmm. Cast a spell. Cast a spell, yep. Nicely done again. Ooh, la. Dear gods. And a... Definitely a spellcaster. Yep, definitely. And then you're healing. A lich today. <laughs> I mean, you've done quite well with your daggers, to be honest. There you go. You get four of your health back. I like that you're just much better at healing yourself than other people. <laughs> so good. Well, of course. <laughs> I have no pro no qualms with touching myself. And um, that came out wrong. That's okay. We 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 understand. Um, so you head down. You finish like glowing as you walk to the entrance of the cave. You maybe get distracted a bit by the mushrooms glowing as well, and then you see Kitty standing. That's what I said. I actually just wanted to make some light, but yeah. oh well. Kitty standing there with her her bow. Uh, probably about to take aim. <laughs> Again, I was going to say Eric there. <laughs> Cavill, God damn it. Cavill is standing covered in blood, like hissing with acid covered in him, uh, his armour, etc. Uh, his shield's tossed to the ground, uh, and he's walking towards a crying goblin on the ground. Right, what do you do? Shoot the goblin. Cool, go for it. <laughs> Dear oh, gods. Nice. Dear gods. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. It's so, <laughs> so fucking dead. It's a crit, my dear. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, how would you kill a goblin? Well, arrow to the back of the head. Cool. Yep. And it's just dead. Just and it slumps wow. over its like comrade's body. And I just walk over kick him off my sword and sheath it. <laughs> yeah, well, the sword would have been, like, kind of at Cavill's feet, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because the other one tried to remember swing it at Cavill. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely near them. So you walk over. Cavill, what are you up to? Um, There was a crying in the back, wasn't there? <laughs> no, yeah. This one was crying. Um, okay. I'll go to the box that the, f that the first one was protected before he started windmilling at me. <laughs> like, open it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, you open it. There is a baby goblin inside. Grab it. <laughs> I <have> no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so let me just let's slow this down, shall we? Let's slow it down. Let's see. What is the most? This seems adorable enough. All right, let's dump this in the chat.
Don't you dare put a baby Yoda picture up. I'm I not. was sure he was gonna put. Oh, okay. I'm actually surprised he's in. Look at them. They're adorable, right? <laughs> you get you get the picture. So, what did you get? Baby. So, I'll be like trying to rush towards it so like I'll get. So what happens is you bring up life drinker. You only, like swing it down two-handed onto this thing. You roll a four, right? Life you drinker. Yep. Hopefully you marked XP. Life drinker just says no for the first time ever. And I just stop. No, you get knocked back on your ass, and life drinker like falls to the ground in front of the the kid. <laughs> Tilt my head at it like. So, so Kitty and uh, Sibylla just see him go to swing at the thing and then just get like knocked on his ass and the sword falls in front of him. Probably the first time you ever see him let go of the sword, probably, in eight months. Good thing you lost your ballads. How dare you try to kill that little cute baby? Oh. And I like try to go towards it and like pick it up and love it. Yeah, and you go over and you pick it up and the thing just kind of looks at you with its big kind of like red glowing eyes. I just look at it with disgust, like... It blinks at you. What the hell are you doing? It's a baby! It's a goblin. It's a baby goblin. All babies are cute. The thing just like, tries to play with your baby. hair, um, Sibylla. So it's trying to, like, kind of oh. rip at your hair. <laughs> I go pick up my sword, look at the baby and go, my sword does not want it dead. Your, your sword is wider than you are. I just look at her holding this baby and go, the first moment it does anything evil, it's dead. Well, I'm quite off. sure the most evil thing's gonna do is poop its little trousers. Oh, well, that is a you problem, not a Is it naked? I, no, it seems to be wearing woolen, like, like a woolen diaper. Uh-huh. And the box seems to have been like filled with wool. Where's the sheep? Can I, can I find the sheep? There What's doesn't happened? seem Why to do be. Sheep? Doesn't seem to be sheep. Sounds like now that you've spent time here, this thing bleats similar to a sheep. Ah, oh. can I see if there's any remains of sheep around? There are definitely remains of sheep. <laughs> is there meat we can take? Or uh, rations? No, it is all long since eaten. You could take you could take bad meat if you wanted. Nope. Okay. No. Can I start collecting heads of the goblins I have chopped? There's not much left. To be honest, you've like your sword just like exploded them. To be honest, that you picked a messy weapon. So yeah, like there's probably <laughs> there is probably two heads upstairs, and then the ones that like Kitty killed and stuff, you could probably cut their heads off if you wanted to. Um, if you but were. But they careful. weren't his kills. Exactly right. So one of them upstairs would have been. Um, so there's probably one goblin head upstairs you could take that isn't just. I'll take that on the way out. Cool. Because um, this is the, the the joy of having a huge, messy, forceful weapon. You. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's trying to absorb the life, isn't it? So. Yeah. Tasty. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it said no to this. So yeah. Um. I think we'll end there, because I like this idea of ending in a shot of uh, you standing in a cave um, and then maybe walking out of the cave with, you know, the wolf heading out with the scout after it being Kitty, um, with a bow and arrow in hand, sword and, you know, sheath. And then you've got him walking out with a goblin kind of hanging by the hair from it, like, you know, by his, uh, in his hand, because obviously your shield's messed up somehow that's been swung on your back now your sword uh, sheathed or maybe it's unsheathed who knows and um, then we've got the baby being carried out by Sibylla as your head back towards uh, civilization I assume so yeah I would say that's a good place to, s- to put an end to that madness <laughs> that was that session um, right we will do all the, the stuff we need to do just now. So, end of session, right? 
When you reach the end of session, choose one of your bonds that you feel is resolved, completely explored, or no longer relevant, or otherwise. Ask the player if of the character if the bond uh, if they agree, and we'll mark XP. So, let's go for Cavill first. Any bonds you think were resolved? No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Um, Sibylla, any bonds you think were resolved? Um, no, definitely not. Okay. Kitty, any bonds you think were resolved? No. It's okay. Uh, then we'll talk about alignment, right? So, Cavill, do you think you achieved your alignment? Oh yes, there was crying goblins in front of me and I still slaughtered them. Cool, mark XP. Sibylla? I'm not sure, because I've used magic to heal, but also to kill things, so... Yeah, no, it still counts. You, you, you did the thing. Yep, mark XP. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yay! So one point of XP for you as well. And... Kitty? Um... No... But then... It says, help an animal or spirit of the wild. Yeah, I, w I don't think that's come up, to be honest. You have the chance! No, I ain't saving a goblin child. <laughs> they grow up to be monsters. I don't see them as an animal as such. They are just... Yeah, I mean, let's face it, you classified them as monsters, right? So, yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, right, so, next, we have the two questions. Did we learn something new and important about the world? We learned everything about the world today. Everybody mark a point of XP. Yeah. Okay, so really gets one for that. I, did we cool. overcome a notable monster or enemy? Do you think the goblins were notable? I mean, that shaman, it gets <laughs> knocked out of me. Like, Jesus Christ, 11 damage? Well, 10. No, 11. It was 11, it was a plus one, yeah. So, no, yeah, I'd say, yeah, you can... He's going to mark XP for that as well. So everybody gets a point of XP for that. Everybody marked that? Good, good. Yeah. Did we loot a memorable treasure? The baby goblin. Do you guys... That's technically me, because you guys wanted to kill it. I mean, I just did what my character would do. <laughs> oh god, it's not a party oh god he, said it. he said the thing. Oh no. The worst justification in the existence of justifications. Well, <laughs> uh, just here, here's a GM tip for you, Cal. Never say that. <laughs> I am, I am literally role playing my character. If I believe that's what you would do, that is what I will do. <laughs> um, everything gets XP if you consider the the baby a memorable treasure. But do you consider it a memorable treasure? So it definitely will be memorable. We picked up a baby goblin wrapped in wool. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming he took his wool blanket with it as well, obviously. Alright, well, I imagine it's a build it. Mm -hmm. um, right. Um, I think I must, I'll probably take the entire box if it's not too heavy. Maybe yeah, I'm not carrying it. You wouldn't be able to lift the entire box yourself. You would need help with it. Oh, um, fuck it then. No, I'm just taking oh. the lead. <laughs> Unless you put the kid in it and just drag it. <laughs> um, like a sled or something. Um... But yeah, you could probably strap yeah, the wolf yeah. to it and let the wolf drag it as a sled. But, um, but you could obviously just take the blanket out of the the box, just wrap it up in it. Sadly, it doesn't have like, its own cool little floating pram device. Um, not yet, anyway. Now, Kitty, you yeah, have... Yeah, I'm guessing they weren't taking that out for regular walks. <laughs> no. Kitty, I assume you were happy with the idea of it being a memorable treasure, or do you not think of it as a memorable treasure? So you caught out there, what'd you say? Is the baby a memorable treasure in your eyes, or not? No, it's a burden. Beast of burden. <laughs> I mean, hmm. Look at you, you cute little burden. <laughs> it, That's mate, what we'll call you, it burden! <laughs> it cries like a sheep. Yeah, it, it definitely like has that same kind of like, meh, kind of vibe to it, yeah. Um, it doesn't really make much noise, to be honest, but that is what you have misheard as sheep earlier. Now, the question is, I don't think he's did look a memorable treasure then. I don't think he's get XP for that one. Yep, I would say that's fine. Um, 
But, Still five experience. So yeah, let's go through it. What did you get total this session? Uh, Cavill uh, and Sibylla. For me, four. Nice. And Kitty? I think I got five. Cool. So there was a couple of failures that you marked and then there was one, two, and you didn't achieve bond or alignment, did you? So it no. was two. So yeah, that probably makes sense. Yeah, if you failed three times. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, Callum, did you mark your extra XP for doing notes? I have now. <laughs> so you're at six then, are you? You disappoint me. I thought you would have done that before you started. No, I, I wanted to make sure it was. Uh, I would rather it's, I'd, I would rather it's done at the end personally because then I know that somebody didn't just mark it and then leave. So, yeah. Um, I mean, Sophie did help me with mine because, like, trying to type what I was saying was brutal. So she types yeah. up my paragraph. It doesn't need to be. Um, what do you call it completely perfect. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't need to be word word perfect. It's just whatever helps you guys. Um, however, I'd say that is that we will deal with the money, etc. Next session, when we do this, yeah. whenever we do this again. Um, however, I don't think there's anything else to do. I'm so weird not having other stuff to do because this is got it all built in. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Let's start with Callum. I like the system a lot. Um, I think that system likes you a lot given how well it was letting you swing <laughs> that goddamn sword. <laughs> I am one with the sword, the sword is one with me. And I love that when you went to kill the baby, it said no. Like, yeah. the dice rolls I, are perfect. I kill stuff. If the sword doesn't want me killing stuff, I don't kill it. Mm, that's good. I like that. It's also a good justification because we know that Sibylla was never going to kill the baby. When you have the sword. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's every possibility I might still kill the baby. Yeah. I will definitely have a chat about your alignment, but that's fine. Um, that's a future conversation. It's a monster. I mean, right? <laughs> um, it's, I viewed it as an enemy until my sword said no. Which makes perfect sense. I love that only you hear that, though. Or at least you think you hear that. I love that. It's brilliant. Just, I would just be like, the sword said Cause no. It could just be that he's that clumsy, that he's just been burnt with acid and stabbed many times and had to drink a healing potion, that when he misses with his sword out of the delirium, he pretends oh, his yeah, sword totally told him. Oh yeah, thought he was clumsy. Yeah, and he's, he's like, oh, my sword told me I hadn't to hit it. Well, is that why you missed, is it, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I obliterated everything else. Oh, uh, it's so good. And it is. There was a pile of guts on the, like, I say, it's probably a, like a makeshift throne that the other goblin was sat on. No, it was just a room with some boxes. Like, <laughs> it's probably them plastered against stuff. Just, just gross. Dead shit <laughs> boxes, some wooden beds. Yeah. Um, like two halves of a goblin. <laughs> many yeah. halves of goblins. Many, many <laughs> halves of goblins. Um, I would say um, sheepish knights went well. Or, sorry, sheepless knights. That was what it was called. Sheepless knights um, went well. You will get your money next time when we get you back to civilization. Um, that might just be a conversation. Uh, Sibylla Adri, what did you think? I liked it. It mm -hmm. took a little while getting used to it, and uh, it is a bit weird thing that I won't be able to like put all my points into this or into that to basically like never fail on that scale. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite interesting to always have that element of will I succeed this time, will I not? Mm -hmm. Will I get in more trouble for doing it than not doing it? So that's quite interesting. It's good because it does reward you for participation as well, and that's why I like the system. Yeah, that, that's one thing I really love about it. Like, if you fuck up, it's not just that you've been useless, it just means that you'll be more useful in the future. Yeah, because as soon as you get enough XP to level up, you'll be able to pick one of the advanced moves from your character sheets, from the 2 to 5 list, and those are really good for everyone. They are so good, quite yeah. frankly. Um, but that was good. Uh, what about yourself, Kitty? And Sophie? <laughs> It's, it is a good system. Um, it was quite funny at the beginning, like, on the spot going, what's your backstory? And like, mm -hmm. uh, it's this, maybe? Yes, okay, it's now. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's one of my favourite parts about it, is the on-the-spot generation. 
because I, mm. I went to write stuff down earlier because I thought, right, cool, I've got a game to run later today. I want to write some stuff down. Normally I would do that for the other game that I use for this system um, yeah. where I built the whole world and then when people come to it, you roll randomly to pick a class and you play that mm. person in the adventuring guild. Everybody goes off and does a daily quest. But I was like, oh, I actually don't have to write anything down because no. that will all happen in the character gen conversation and world gen. And now... The other two, Stu and Scott, now have to deal with the world use of half created, right? Yeah. So when we do character gen with them, we'll have everybody involved again, and then they'll bond with whoever's here, and we'll move forward for quest two at that point. Um, and that'll be it. Like they'll add to the world. So if they decide that elves are in fact not wizards, they're from an elven tribe that aren't, right? Which means maybe the elves learn magic a different way that was new, or they borrow it from another, like a, de a demon or a god or something. So we learn more about the world with what they decide for their characters, which I think is really cool. Much like the, are they, are you whole, like, do you have a secret against her or not? Is she paranoid or not? That kind of duality to each of the situations. Yeah. I like that because you're not saying some truth about another character. You're saying what your truth is about that character. And I do like that about the system. Um, it's quite a bit different from D&D, &D, quite a bit. Um, but that's why I thought this would be quite a fun thing to do on our sessions where we can't make our D&D games for uh, various reasons. And it will be likely mm. three people playing this at a time because not always will it be a case of I'll stop it if there's four of us that can make it for D&D because a lot of things will happen where I can continue the game based on where the story is with four people if we drop one. But maybe if we drop mm. two, defaulting to this is a good plan because you can just literally say, right, what's the mission today? And then we'll just go do something and we'll see what the hell happens. It's also good because it promotes you guys having to be descriptive as well. You just need to say what what you do. You just need to then... Mm -hmm. I mean, it keeps me on my toes when I have to deal with what the failures are. Um, that's good fun. And I don't always believe in a failure being completely crippling. Like the four that you got on your life drinker roll there, uh, Callum. Like that might come up much later now, given the nature of what the swords did. Right, um, but that just adds to the lore because in D and D, if your sword isn't a magic sword that has sentience, it won't speak to you. You are just delusional if you think it does. In this, <laughs> you have so much more freedom because, yeah, why not? Why isn't it a magic sword? Our magic sword is normal, or, you know, like that's the. I'm assuming in this world, magic swords aren't normal since elves keep everything secret that seems to be magic. But then. If we get a halfling turning up at some point and they say, oh yeah, all halflings are like made of magic, right? Then that's a thing that's now a thing. Um, I think Scott said uh, he's going to try and make a cleric, but we'll see what him or Stu, because if Stu turns up first and makes a cleric, that'll be taken. Um, mm. But we'll see. Still probably be happy with anything since he's played in the system a few times now and just enjoys making random characters. Uh, anything anyone else wants to add to this? No. All good. We've already had our title because that was the quest name, so we're kind of happy with that, quite frankly. Um, mostly we need to thank Star Wars for all of our plot ideas. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll, we'll give back Darth Vader and also Baby Yoda when we're finished with them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for playing, guys. It was a pleasure. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.